Welcome to the WAN Show. We've got a great show lined up for you guys today. Yeah. NVIDIA hit a valuation of two trillion dollars. Yes, yes, with a pinky. Trillion. Also, Reddit's licensing deal with Google has been this was this was leaked, right? No, they confirmed the leak. Uh, also, Reddit is going public. What else we got today? PlayStation 2 VR is coming to PC. Five. Well, okay. Uh, PlayStation VR 2. He's not feeling well today. Oh, this could be a rough yeah. show. <laughs> and I have no excuse. What else we got? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and, and the CEO says, don't buy Helldivers 2. Really? Yeah. You picked that. I don't know. The CEO of what? Uh, it's not, it doesn't say. I'm pretty sure the CEO of uh, the Arrowhead, which is the company that made. Cool. That's Helldivers the context 2. they needed. Let's yeah. roll that intro. Oh boy. Whoa. Get out of here. This disaster is brought to you by AG1, Vessi, and The Ridge. Why don't we jump right into our headline topic? And that is NVIDIA's market cap go stonks. Whew. What the actual f am I looking at here? This is parabolic. Surely there must be a limit to this somewhere, but we've yet to see it. Absolutely incredible. So what we're looking at here is Crypto Boom the first, Crypto Boom the second, and AI. Okay, what's a word that's bigger than boom? Hyperboom? I like hyperboom. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Turbo boom. Turbo boom. <coughs> Mondo boom. Omega boom. It's yeah, you know, I don't mind omega boom, but that it would have to be the last one, and I really don't think this is the last we're seeing of yeah. interesting uses for Nvidia's GPUs that are spoiler not gaming. Nvidia briefly hit a two trillion dollar market cap this morning, becoming the third company to do so after Apple and Microsoft. However. Axios has argued that NVIDIA's current arc is likely to plateau given that most of its biggest customers, like Microsoft and Google, have reported weak earnings numbers recently, in part because their expensive AI features largely aren't making money yet. NVIDIA might also face increased competition within the AI chip market as companies like Microsoft continue developing their own chips in an effort to move away from their dependence on NVIDIA, who charges as we gamers already knew and could have warned them about, a lot for their technology. Oh, yeah. In its most recent annual report, NVIDIA listed its top competitors as Huawei, AMD, Amazon, Microsoft, and Broadcom. NVIDIA has also launched a beta for the NVIDIA app. Okay, well, this is a completely separate topic. We can... Very, very different. Anyway, the point is... Um, we're being asked in our discussion question, how overhyped is it really? And I would like to preface our response with, we are not analysts. No. Yep. This is not financial. We're advice. not. We, there's, no, there's no anal in either of us. Nope. Not right now. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the point is that we're not analysts and we, <laughs> and this is not financial <laughs> advice. That should set the tone for how seriously you should be taking any of what I'm about to say. Yeah. Um, but the, to be to be truthful with you, <laughs> I think that Nvidia does have competition coming. Uh, Jim Keller actually just weighed in on Sam Altman's whole thing, where he needs like seven trillion dollars to build AI chips or something like that, and he's basically like, "I'll do it in less." Oh. Yeah. Dang. Like that Jim Keller, like, yeah. like, like K8 AMD Jim Keller and, um, shoot. What was the, uh, uh, what oh, man I'm trying to think? Oh yeah. Also Zen Jim Keller, like, like that Jim Keller, like chip architect, Jim Keller. Um, so with that said, I mean, it's clear that competition is coming for them. It's clear that additional fab capacity is coming in the future. Uh, Intel has been talking a lot about their intention to, I mean, this is, this is great. This actually isn't in the doc this week, but Pat Gelsinger said, we'd love to build chips for AMD. 
he actually like finally said the thing that I was talking yeah. about over the last little bit where yeah. I've been like, hey, this Intel, we're going to be a fab thing is something that I think has been overlooked. Not financial advice. Um, also, Intel insiders are apparently buying up a bunch of stock right now. Not financial, Not financial advice. advice. Uh, but, Neither of us are analysts. But what appears is going to be happening, TSMC is adding fabrication capacity in Japan in anticipation of China's eventual encroachment on Taiwan. Um, Intel is building out fab capacity at a pace that, to my knowledge, is, has not been seen before from them, um, including in the continental U.S. Um, we've got intense competition for this enormous market that is the AI chip market, both from a dedicated chip designers and from the companies that are the ones who are procuring these chips, like the Microsofts of the world. Um, so I do, I do think that competition is coming. However, and this is from someone who would not describe themselves as a fan of NVIDIA's way of doing business. It's funny because Jensen has actually said very similar things about Intel. But I will say this about NVIDIA. And that is, if NVIDIA were to, for some reason, enter MySpace... I would immediately be heading for the Facebook. <laughs> That's pretty good. You're applauding that? That's pretty good. I assumed you were going for the bell. Anyway, uh, the point is, they are not a company... Wasn't worthy of the bell. <laughs> ...that I would bet against. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if there's a big paradigm shift and traditional GPUs you don't make as much sense as some kind of new AI chip architecture. Um, I wouldn't imagine myself, um, you know, s savvier and cleverer than NVIDIA in terms of figuring that out and being somewhat on top of it. With that said, it's not like there aren't other smart people out there. Um, mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to say is the future is extremely murky. I do see how... There could be some hesitation around uh, just projecting, you know, infinite growth because that's not how that works. And that is yeah. a good point that these AI features aren't making money. But just because a space isn't making money doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a ton of capital rushing into it. And as long as these companies keep buying, it doesn't matter. Now, now if they're not making money, that could be a sign that they're not going to keep buying but silicon valley has often not really cared that much and the intense competition that you guys are noting for the on the chip side also exists on the software side yeah and that competition as far as i can tell has not slowed down at all i mean at google people are sharing internal memes kind of poking fun at how many ai products and how many ai code names Google has for all of the various initiatives that they're running right now. Something has to power that, and that something is NVIDIA for yeah. the time being. Yeah. I would love to see... Man, can I just dream for a second here? Okay, we had that whole thing. We talked about this a few weeks ago where uh, AMD was like cloak and dagger, like, like funding... Um, uh, like a CUDA translator that could run on AMD GPUs. Yeah. And, and and so, you know, if I could imagine like an amazing world, it would be one where AMD, you know, instead of NVIDIA using gaming to get profitable and build AI stuff, you know, AMD sells some AI GPUs and then uses that sick AI money to build better GPUs that they also sell to gamers like like they flip the whole they flip the whole thing upside down and then we get like real competition in the gaming space but i don't think that's going to happen i mean amd has shown time and time again that they are every bit as much a company as nvidia yeah. is yeah uh well i shouldn't say every bit as much a company as nvidia is they are a similar similar level of just a company to NVIDIA. Um, and so they're going to operate in their best corporate interest but hopefully that remains um you know, building GPUs for gamers, please. But realistically, I think we could end up waiting for Battle Mage. 
um, to, to be a, a real threat That's to NVIDIA. That's why I've been leaning for a while now. I, I feel like it's going to be Intel eventually. I don't necessarily know that it'll be Battle Mage. Maybe it'll be... I don't think it's going to be Battle Mage. I was dreaming. Whatever the C1. I was dreaming Celestial. Ah. Yeah, I, I was dreaming. I think after that is, I want to say Druid? Arc Druid, is that a thing? Have they have they announced them that far ahead? Uh, yeah, yeah. Druid is still just a rumor, but that is... Uh, that that is that is understood to be the code name. So uh, alchemist, battle mage, celestial, druid, and then I don't think we have anything for E evoker yet. Uh, I bet it'll be evoker. Evoker, yeah, really, yeah. Not elf, no. Not elfling, druid, druid, elfling. Battle mage and druid are classes. Elf is a sure, race. but is celestial? Well, I guess kind of. I mean, you could say you could say you could say uh, oh oh enchanter. Oh, that's pretty good. Or, or they could mix it up. Enchantress. Yeah. Is that PC anymore? Literally no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. You know what? Let's play this game. Oh, I know I promised it would be a short oh, show today because no. Luke's not feeling well. But oh, no. let's let's play this game with oh. the uh, w- okay. They could cheat for something like F. They could go Fire Mage or something like that. You, you yeah. kind of you could kind of cheat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you could go Flayer. Um, you could go with. Fighter. Let's see. F- oh, fighter. Oh, man. Fighters, actually, I kind of like it. Fighter 700 would be like a sick name for like a graphics the, card. The mo- it's the most basic, yeah. but it's almost just, it's almost the strongest sounding. Yeah. Okay. I'm going like with, one. I'm going with, we're going to map it out for Intel. And if anyone from <laughs> Intel is watching, we and, and the community are going to do the rest of the work for you guys. And then you just have to stick with our roadmap. Grenadier? Yeah, I was think, like Gunner or Grenadier or something. Oh, Gunner, why do you keep immediately having something that's way more obvious and way better than mine? <laughs> I don't know if they would go with Gunner, though. Okay, Hellcat. Ooh. Give me something here. Um, Howitzer. No, that's not really Yeah, a... I think sticking away from the guns is likely for Intel. Yeah, that there's makes a, there's sense. There's a lot of weight on that. Yeah, and, um, and like, you know, Mage oh, and yeah. Celestial. Hunter. And... Hunter. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was that was that was full plane chat. I took that from full plane chat. Dang it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I's got to be ice something. Um. Uh. No. No. It could be. I'm, see, I'm trying to do this on my own. You're just reading float plane chat. That oh, okay. is all such right, a right, hack. All right, all right, all right. That is I such a I hack. Get, uh, the only one I got from there, I, I said what it was. Um. I. <laughs> I want to kind of cheat and just go with invoker instead of evoker. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, illusionist? Illusion? Ooh, illusionist is good. I'm picturing, uh, man, what, what's, I'm picturing Job from Arrested Development, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It makes me think of, like, very old school RPGs. Jay, Joker? Jester, Joker. Javelinist? Like, uh, uh, Jouster? Joust. Dang it! Stop it! <laughs> You're actually upsetting me now. <laughs> How about jackass? <laughs> Jerk face. <laughs> Jack off. No! <laughs> Almost got him. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> oh. That was close. Okay, K. Oh, K is a Knight. tough one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they even used it as a code name before. Knight's Corner, Knight's Landing. That was even freaking a GPU. How did I not think of it? Sort of. This one's going to be sort really of. hard. Okay, okay, L. Lancer. Let- Uh, oh, 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 Lightbringer. No, okay. Uh, light, Lightbringer? Light, Why light, not Lightbringer? Well, no, it's more of a name. It's it's less of a... Lancer's a class. If we're sticking with classes, I feel like, it's not... I feel like Lightbringer could be like a paladin specialization. I think Lightbringer's fine. Uh, well, mm, it, yeah, it, uh, it could be, but it isn't. It could be. Okay, so... Well, uh, but there's gotta be, there's gotta be light something. There's gotta be like, uh... Um, I mean, yeah, I guess we missed kind of some obvious ones. Like H could be like Holy Knight or something like that. But then I don't know, we're gonna end up with two knights, probably. Okay, L, uh, L. Uh, l- 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 you could have like Lunar something, you know, Lunar Elf or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, that's that's again that's a race, not a class. Um, 
All right, I'm I'm just looking. I'm just looking at Luke. No, they're not. It's not going to be Luke. <laughs> That'd be so sick. Light Llama. Why am I even looking at this? You guys aren't even helpful. Okay. I would ask for no royalties at all. Just name it, name it Luke. They've uh, already done Battle Mage, so we can't just go straight for Mage. mage. Yeah. Um. Murderer. No, probably not <laughs> the Intel Arc. Seems extremely unlikely. The Intel Arc Murderer. That's more like what would be NVIDIA's code name for whatever they're going to put up against it. Mercenary? Um, it might be too... Uh, like Madman, something like that. Madman. Ooh, Mercenary. Oh, it's got to be... Dang it! Um, oh, Marauder? Marauder's good. I Marauder. Like Marauder. It's yeah. going to be Marauder. Yeah. N... Uh, oh, I meant Night Elf. Nightblade. Nightblade. Crap. I picked a race again. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. Um, oppressor. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds it's like it kinda, could be a It's kind of sick. I just don't oh, think Intel would do it. Oppressor, Onslaught, uh, like, over Overpowerer, like, oh. Oh, man. Oh man, D could have been like Devourer. That would have been kind of cool. It's a little graphic, though. It's a little graphic. I feel like Intel is going to want to be a little bit more. And balanced. looking at the artwork that they've had so far, it's more <laughs> like 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 arcane and like uh, like high fantasy. It's not like like horror. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. like like Devourer. It's, it's more Doom. It's like demonic, you know. Um, yeah, something like occult. Not only is that not a class, but yeah, I think they wouldn't go that direction. The anyways. occultist. Occultist. Uh, uh, that's actually not terrible. We don't have a ton of options. What? Oh, like Omen something? Omen? O Omen bringer. Like, I don't... Okay, I don't know. What is, what is chat saying? Oracle. Obviously. Oracle? Yeah, yeah. It's good. Right. it has to be Oracle. Yep. You guys... You guys... <laughs> clear W on that one. <laughs> yeah. Paladin. Okay. <laughs> yes! One you victory one. for me! <laughs> there you go. Uh, Q... It's like queen or like, uh, uh, hmm. Is this even fun for people? I have no idea. Not a clue. Uh, yeah. People man. seem engaged. Quartermaster. That's not bad. Quartermaster is pretty good. That's actually, that's solid. I kind of like quartermaster. I actually like that a lot. There's yep. a lot of like queen and quilt and you just kind of quiz. Quilt? Like, yeah. I think quartermaster is really solid. <laughs> I would laugh so hard if they made it quilt. Like, no. <laughs> like the quilt fighter. Just like, what? He's like, just puts a blanket over his he head. He lays down like, in the corner and just yeah. hopes no one notices. Yeah. Um, a security blanket. Q R R. Rat and Ravage. No. Oh. That one's pretty, that one's pretty. Swordsman? Probably yeah. not. No, it's too, it's too simple. Spellblade? Oh, okay. That's cool. Uh, Sorcerer. You could, yeah, there's actually so many. Like Spellbinder. There's you, a like, lot you of could S's. come up with almost anything yeah, for that. There's tons of S's. Um, samurai. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Nice. That would be pretty sick. Actually, I, I think it's got to have to be Samurai. Samurai is pretty like, good. Just with how much kind of, you know, magey stuff we've already got. I don't want to see like spell Spellsmith. Yeah, or anything I, like, like that. I like Samurai too. T. It's good. Taylor. It's a popular name. It's really fast. Uh, <laughs> the Ark the Ark Taylor. It's 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 your bard. It's just like a it's a <laughs> Get it as fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he got there. Yeah. It's a little slow today. Yeah. Uh, There's tea. like thief. Oh, um Okay. Yeah, I don't think they'd want that. I don't though. think they would want thief. No. No, um, no thief. Ark no. Ark Ah. Uh, So they wait, yeah. Tom. Ark was the first one. So no, it no. could be Arc like Alchemist. Ark Battle Mage. Ark Celestial. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Ark is always part of it. Okay, okay. Um Ooh, Tempest. I like that. I like that. Tempest Tempest is pretty good. I think it, that's I think. gotta be the one. Tinkerer is not bad. Tinkerer though. is very good. And very different from everything so far. Yep. I mean, yeah. at this point, we're talking like the roadmap is out into about 2040 or so, 2045. Yeah. So <laughs> probably, we might not even live long enough to see these code names. And but. they've probably like picked a new naming scheme at this point anyways. But who knows? Maybe this will be the one time that a company actually sees it through. Google bailed. Why did they bail on Android names? Yeah, I liked them. 
it was it was so much more memorable. I can't even keep track of the numbers anymore. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you ask me, okay, what did Kit Kat look like? I'd be like, oh yeah, like kind of like 100%, that. Yeah. Yeah. Honeycomb. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Honeycomb was when we like you know got landscape on tablets and stuff. Yeah, right. Like it just and it worked better and stuff. Like it was more optimized. Like I remember those <clears> things. <throat> Um, okay. Okay. Where do we leave off? Where do we leave off? I'm not with it enough to even know. But okay, we're under. We're on you. You. Yeah. U- ultra something probably like a ultra. Altruist. <laughs> that's not how that spells. That's, that's an A. <laughs> that's a uh, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I mean, I thought it was more B tier, but uh, oh, appreciate wow. you. Hey, there we go. Uh, my brain went to Undertaker, but they would never do that. No. Um, no. 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 Umbra? Is that like... Umbra? What is Umbra? What Isn't that, that just again? like a soccer brand? Oh, no, that's Umbro. <laughs> Trust them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unicorn? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that'd be cool branding, like Unicorn Rider or something like that. But I just, I don't see it. It's not really aligned with what we have so far, which is yeah, Alchemist, Battle Mage, Celestial Druid. I just don't, I don't see like a prancing unicorn. Usurper. I like that one. Oh, that's not bad. It might feel a little late. Like, I, I would assume that we're not going to get to Usurper if they haven't usurped anything by then. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fair. Uh, I do like it, though. Ultima, that's pretty sick. Yeah, it's that's a spell, though. Right? Like, that's not... Uh, it's going to be Ultra something. It'll, ultra Blade or Ultra... Uh, ultra something. But I don't know exactly what. Conrad says, Gemini says, Umbralist, Untamer, and Urchin. Yeah, it's definitely... So Umbra is the fully shaded inner region of a shadow cast by an opaque object, especially the area on the Earth or Moon experiencing a total phase of an eclipse. It is often used in video games to describe, like, something shadowy, something you should be concerned about. There's a sword in Morrowind called Umbra. The Umbralist. That, like, uh... Yeah, I don't think that's good. Compels the, the wielder to... It. Okay. Pwn. Ultra something. Yeah. B. That one's kind of unfortunate. Vi- the violence giver. <laughs> the, the the venge venge something. I need, I need to close this. The, the venger. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I first you, went to ventriloquist, which is not good. Ventriloquist. <laughs> the violinist. Everyone's fighting. You're just like. Burr, burr. I mean, they don't have a bard yet, so. Yeah. 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 Unless they go with my pitch for T. The tailor. <laughs> um, v for the violence wreaker. I am I am stealing this from Chad. I saw this before I closed the screen, but Viper. Um, it's, it's okay. It it's could be like okay. a rogue specialization, maybe. Yeah. But it's a little eh, like poison-based rogue or something. Yeah. The, um, the vasectomy giver. <laughs> just... I could see a D&D campaign based around that. I will. I will eliminate your offspring. <laughs> <laughs> we, we won't win this war this year or next year we'll but give us a war. generation or two war in, in generations from now <laughs> if only it wasn't a real thing <laughs> yeah yeah uh okay yeah. so v then um i mean it's for vendetta obviously right but uh, the, the vendetta Okay, do you guys have anything? Vanguard, dang it, how'd we not hey, think of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, All right Vulture, that's not bad either. Vanguard, I think, is it? No, it's gotta be Vulture. Really? Yeah! It's Vanguard. What? It's Vanguard for sure. Dan, settle this. Uh, Vanguard, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah All right. T U V W. Okay, W. Uh, War, War Horse. Wizard. Warlord. Warlord's pretty good. I think Warlord's cooler than Wizard. Dan, Warlock? Settle. Warlock? Warlock. All right, we'll just go with that. I think Warlock might win. Yeah, you got one. All right, X. <sighs> X-Man. <laughs> <laughs> you just collab with them. Yeah. He's like, whatever, we couldn't think of a name. Yeah, well, just... that was like uh, uh, Google did with um, Nestle or whatever for KitKat. Oh, yeah. They were yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. We, we have nothing for K. So we're going we're gonna, to like license this thing that we can call it. <laughs> like, we'll work with them on it. Um, so it's actually just X-Men. Uh, I feel like there's got to be Xenomorph. That's yeah. something. That's, that's chat. That's chat gets credit for that one. Is that a class? They could just call it, they could just call it the Warrior Princess. <laughs> <laughs> Xena. Um, Xena actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it would have a similar issue to X-Men. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Let's just go with um, yeah. Xenomorph would have the same problem too. That's, that's certainly copyrighted or whatever the yeah copyrighted or protected in some way. Um, 
Xeno, Xeno Blade. Oh, no, that's a thing. Crap. Uh, Z- Xeno something, probably. Yeah. Um, okay, why? Yak Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. I can't think of much. Um, um, the Yakker. Right, right, because we don't have a, we don't have like a, like a charismatic. The yacker. The yacker. Yeah, that's a horrible name. <laughs> oh my god. Um, did you just did you just do a takedown of my entire class? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, my job. It's funny because what I first jumped to was yappy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right, I'm going to chat. Yeah, what do they got? YOLO. Ugh. Yerf dog? What? Wow, you guys aren't even trying I- Igdras- anymore. Yggdrasil is not like a... The Yankee. Yeah, but it's a cool word. It is a cool word. What, what's, a, what's a Yankee? You, it like rides into battle. Yodeler. Yeehaw! There you go. The yodeler. I mean, sure. Um, ugh. Yeoman? That's something. Which is more than what we had. You missed Ark? What? No? What? Uh, yeah, Yaman is, Yaman is decent. I say we go with that. Yaman? It's like a shaman, but cooler? I guess so. <laughs> I don't think so. I forget what they do. Yaman. Uh, a man holding and cultivating a small landed estate. Oh, a freeholder. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I, I thought yeah, you were saying like Y-A-M-M. No, yeah, it's not, it's not like Yelmancer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, funnily it's like enough, a it is like a barbarian. shout attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah, we, sure. We can't do Yaku- they can't do Yakuza. That's not. Yeah, that's definitely not going to be a thing. No, <laughs> Yeezy collab. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Z Zapper. Oh, Conrad's got it. He might have got it from Gemini. I'm not sure, but Zealot. Oh, Zealot. Okay, yeah, that's gonna have to be it. Okay, yeah. man, what did we do for S? Sapper wouldn't have been bad. There was there was like too many. For oh, there S. was too many for S. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, there's so many good ones. Like a million. Options. Can, can I can I have Sapper? Sapper's pretty good. Is Intel gonna want to call their thing Sapper? I think you could, I think you could. I think you could. I think with cool enough branding, Sapper fits into what we have established so far swashbuckler dang there's so many s's fine (laughs) zookeeper all right let's go into topic number two i don't even remember what topic number one Uh, was anymore there was a bit of an ending on topic number one which is nvidia has also launched a beta for the nvidia app which finally merges features of geforce experience and the nvidia control panel on windows it offers account-based awards but thank goodness finally doesn't require login to use it actually looks super cool they also launched i believe it's in beta right now but they also launched a new feature so the the ai powered sdr to hdr video conversion that they've had available for some time now is now available as a toggle in the new driver Um, and this is a really well-timed launch from them going hey try our new driver not only is it a new driver and like, you know, the first time we've updated our look in, you know, 20 years or however long it's been <laughs> since they first launched the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, but we've got this very compelling new feature that people might want to try. So it's an automatic SDR to HDR converter for games, which already <laughs> exists, at least in Windows, but is now powered by AI or something. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, we are we were working on a video on the video version, and then we were going to kind of touch on the hacky way that um, some folks found to enable it in games. Uh, but now we're just going to bundle those two together, and we're going to do a video on HDR or SDR to HDR conversion because there's a lot of HDR monitors out there now at this point. As if you consider TVs monitors, there's ton of them basically every tv in the last few years over the very very entry level has been hdr capable and in many cases more capable than the entry level hdr monitors so anyone who's gaming on a tv a relatively recent tv is going to be able to take advantage of this in a big way because there's still a significant shortage of hdr content particularly on the video side like if you go like if you just you know look at look for any movie you enjoy here uh pick a movie you enjoyed as a kid that you think is 
you know, probably not a huge deal. You know, it's not Lord of the Rings, but just some movie you liked. <laughs> He's gonna out himself here. No, oh, man. I just, I just, it's, it's, it's white chicks, isn't it? All right, I'll look it up. <laughs> white chicks. You just, you cut me off at the pass. I was gonna say Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, and then you were like, can't be that. I was like, all right, fair enough. I never watched like a ton of movies. Um, original Top Gun. Okay. Yeah, Top Gun, man, okay, Top Gun probably does have an HDR release. Uh, what, what was it, 1988? Uh, shut up, it's not from 1980, is it? 1986. All right. Uh, man, I can't believe Tom Cruise has been cool as long as I've been alive. <laughs> Mind-blowing. Yeah. Uh, no, Top Gun did get a 4k ultra hd blu-ray so it it is available uh with in dolby vision but my point is that there are a lot There's, of I mean, older movies that yeah, are not available in hdr uh, in any release format <laughs> that's that decent quality there's a lot that do have hdr releases through streaming platforms but if i could watch the blu-ray with a light ai upscaling and with a good SDR to HDR conversion, I think I'm at the point now where I understand and I accept that that's the best I'm ever going to get, and I think I could settle for that. Because HDR, 4K, Blu-ray is dying. Ooh, original Tron, yeah. That probably got the HDR. You've seen that, right? Um, oh. I haven't. Wow. Hey, speaking of which, have you played any Final Fantasy VI? No. Oh, right. I wanted to this week, but if I wasn't working, I was generally sleeping. Yeah. Right. Week, so, who would like to see a 4K remaster of Original Tron? No, it appears it has not gotten the treatment. Apparently, neither has RoboCop. Uh, Shaun of the Dead. I, I doubt Shaun oh, of the Dead is getting a. a I agree, HDR but that 4K, would whatever. That would, would look, yeah. I like that movie. Um, what was Shaun of the Dead shot on? Would it even shut up? <laughs> it was shot on film. With oh, RE sick. cameras. There would be enough dynamic range there and yeah. enough resolution for them to do it if anyone was motivated enough to do it. And it really is, it, it's a great movie. It's so good. I, I'm not even a huge fan of the zombie movie genre, so I'm sure there were references that I didn't get and stuff like that, but it was, it was absolutely a, a, a blast. And I love Simon Pegg. Uh, I just think he is one of those people who's naturally hilarious, no matter what he's doing. It's incredible. A Galaxy Quest. Oh, oh, so good. Speaking of actors that I love no matter what they're doing. Um, oh, my God. Why can't I remember his name right now? This is so embarrassing. Uh, Alan Rickman. Jeez. Oh, wow. Yeah, Alan Rickman. Man, he's awesome. He's fantastic in everything. He's awesome. Have you seen Galaxy Quest? Yeah. Oh, okay. Parts of it. By Grap Thar's hand. Oh, man, he's so good. Anyway. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I've seen parts you of it. Have, what? Yeah. How can you watch part of a movie like that and not watch the whole thing? I just don't really watch stuff that often. I guarantee you've seen parts of original Tron. You ever watched the whole thing? No, I've never seen any of it. Wow, really? Yeah, I mean, I... When would I... Okay, we either had it on VHS when I was a kid, or oh, I yeah, haven't we seen ne it. We never owned it. Where would I have seen like it? Like Galaxy Quest, I never had like access to it. Well, where then? Where did you see it? How do you see parts Sailing of movies? The seas. Uh, people reference it all the time. There's like YouTube things on it, stuff like that. Oh, okay, I yeah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Luke might be a psycho, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I get, I like, I get too distracted um, watching like TVs and shows. Like if if I TVs and shows. <laughs> man um if i'm watching something with well, that's somebody. why you're distracted you got all these tvs <laughs> how are you supposed to pay attention to any of the movies you're watching I, my my living like, room yeah, is just like types of loose <laughs> movie reviews really disjointed story it felt like if they'd had five six more of a movie there there really would have been something maybe it had something to do with the fact that i had half a dozen movies going at the same time <laughs> maybe not sure that Jeez. seems like a movie problem not a me problem uh yeah uh, yeah, I was, I was saying, like, my, my living room is, like, those old, like, 90s sets with, like, just the tower of CRTs. It's like, yeah, that's how I watch TV. Uh, that's how I, I watch TVs. I guess it's time for us to talk about the big Reddit licensing deal with Google slash yeah. Reddit goes public. 
Reddit filed its initial public offering yesterday to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange as RDDT. According to the company, in addition to offering stock to institutional investors, they will also be offering it to its top users, including moderators, based on Reddit karma. Hmm. I knew that karma was going to be worth something someday. (laughs) Too bad it's Reddit stock. (laughs) Yeah. With that said, Reddit has some news obviously timed to help boost it during the IPO to share that makes it seem like maybe not just an endless money pit forever. Reddit confirmed a leak claiming it had struck a content licensing deal with a major AI company. Google will apparently have direct access to Reddit's API for the purpose of training data. The deal is rumored to be worth 60 million US dollars annually to Reddit. The filing likewise revealed that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is the third largest shareholder in Reddit with 8.7% of the shares compared to Reddit CEO Steve Huffman's 3.3%. Of course, he's in there somewhere. So, um, the whole thing where, you know, you create the value for the site, where where the site is free to use because you're the product. Yeah. There's your, there's your evidence. There it is. There it is right there. Everybody knows. I don't know. Do they, though? I, I actually am not. No, I am not convinced of that. I, I had a family dinner not that long ago, and I had a rel- <laughs> oh relative ask me, well, how do you make money on YouTube? And I was like, how do they make money with TV? Like, ads and, and, and like, product placements. It's like, what, what, what are you asking? How does anybody make money on anything? Like, I, I, think, I think people just, especially older generation people, no, no, fundamentally do not. Oh understand that the internet costs money even necessarily yeah like like the 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 idea that reddit might need tens of millions of dollars in order to operate is just why it's just a page of text right like that can't be that hard right like it might be a lot cheaper if it was just a page of text i I suspect it has to do a lot with reddit video and uh lots of other things they have going on their picture and video hosting. Uh, there was there was sites that cropped up in the early Reddit days. I, th- I think Imager is one of them, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure there was other ones as well where their whole thing was that they were a host for video and pictures that went on Reddit. Uh, and then I think Reddit saw that and was like, oh, we want to move this in-house, but that just costs insane amounts of money. So there's a couple of discussion questions here. <laughs> one is how will going public change Reddit? I mean, I don't think at all compared to how they've been behaving recently, since everything they've done over the last couple of years has been in the lead up to going public and trying to juice the value as much as humanly possible. Um, I guess what, what I want to know is how, how, yeah, no, I guess I don't really want to know anything. Oh, right. Yes. I remember what I want to know. I want to know if you would invest in Reddit. No. Well, hold on a second though. (laughs) Would you have said the same thing when Facebook went IPO? Uh, When did they go IPO? Oh, man. It's like 10, 12 years ago. Then probably. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Facebook IPO versus today. Hold on. So Facebook has been, uh, well, I think a five, a five banger for people who invested. Hold on. IPO price of $38 around a... At today's price. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Today's price of around 191 per share. This article is from 2019. Okay, where is the stupid... How much are they worth today? Uh, so they went IPO at apparently $38 on the first trading day. And then uh, Facebook stock price. So what are we at now? 484. Okay, so it's more than a 10 banger. T- bagger, bagger, that's the word. So it's like a 13 bagger or something like that. You 13 extra money over... Uh, what was it? Let's see, when did they go IPO? Facebook, so that Facebook was 2012, was, so about 12 years ago. Man, I'm good. Okay. Facebook was the king of the internet back then. They were, but it wasn't clear what their model for actually monetizing any of it was going oh, to be. Oh, yeah, but that never mattered. Okay, all right. But you don't see a path to Reddit becoming a bigger player in the advertising space or the AI the space. The advertising space? No. As far as my understanding goes, advertising on Reddit... Uh, is horrible and has always been horrible. What about the microtransaction space? I don't think so. I don't think anyone really cares. Um, they even like killed awards, didn't they? 
I'm not sure. I don't know. I think so. I maybe don't really use Reddit other to be new honest way with to you. Do it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's some other new way to do it. But I think they removed the original way that you could like guild posts and stuff like that. Um, they might have replaced it. I might be wrong. I don't know. Don't take that as anything. Um, their only real value I can think of is selling their data. Um, which they're getting $60 million for it. Um, From one company. I don't know if that's exclusive. I, was going I doubt to it. assume, really. I sincerely doubt that that's exclusive. I mean, why would Sam Altman, who owns, what was it, like six point something percent of the company? 8.7. Um, yeah, why, why would he be like, you know what would be cool? Not having this data. Not having this data. I'm yeah. not going to advocate against this. Like, and if they took, even if they took half as much for access from Google... Well, then they could sell it. Google, Microsoft. Ooh, would OpenAI just have that? Not necessarily. They could say, no, you have to buy two licenses, one for Microsoft, one for OpenAI. And then, I mean, who the f*** knows? Like, maybe Yahoo still wants it because they want to be relevant again or <laughs> that's something. Microsoft like, again. <laughs> you could de- oh, that's right. You could definitely, the point is, you could definitely turn around and sell it multiple <laughs> times. selling it to Microsoft like six times. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you're a public company, so you're just going to do whatever is best for you, ethics be damned. So you're probably going to sell it to, you know, like a, um, um, crap, it's escaping me. The one that, uh, like Alibaba, uh, you're probably going to sell it to, um, you know, Baidu. Uh, no, no, I, I absolutely, I absolutely think that. If they that can scale up selling their data, um, maybe they'll have some pretty good use. But there's a lot of, the laws around that right now are kind of weird. And the concern for me is that that might already be priced in. Yeah. But I don't know that for sure. How, much, how much are they losing per year right now? Uh, that I don't know. I can tell you that they've been really pushy lately about us advertising on them. I don't think they really know who we are. It's like, oh, hold on one sec. Um, like, I, I... We don't advertise Yeah, Linus Tech Tips on Reddit. Well, we, we... I guess that might go to the wrong inbox, but we do advertise, like, certain creator warehouse things. No, it went to my inbox. And they're like, yeah, Linus Tech Tips is really cool. Uh, brands have seen success in our program. We thought Linus Tech Tips could be a good fit. Heck yeah, dude. Uh, w- that you're missing out on an incremental engaged audience. Um, yeah, I, um, I guess that's neat, but like, we don't, I mean, do you want, do you want to advertise with us? Yeah, <laughs> so, really? Who, who know yeah. reverse? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can, we can sell your data. <laughs> um, I don't know how to read this. I'm, I'm, I'm getting like headlines, but oh. I'm not getting a lot of, uh, apparently they saw 21% Revenue growth, uh, but ninety million dollars in losses. Nice, sick, nice. I mean, you know, for for Silicon Valley, that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I would be. I, I would have been pretty. What is is bullish the right term on Facebook? Yeah, when it went IPO, I remember when that happened, and I remember being like. Don't have well, any money. Don't have any money. Yeah. Yep. Would have been sick though. Um, th- I don't feel the same way this time around. Um, I remember before Halo 1 came out, I I like begged my grandpa to invest in Bungie without knowing that that wasn't like a thing you could do. Um, but I was like, this game's going to go bangers. I like, I know it. Um I remember years later being like, oh man, I wish he like did that. He'd be like so wealthy now. And then I looked into it and I was like, yeah, it's not a thing you can do. <laughs> like, okay, cool. Oh man. Uh, oh, Luke. Anyways. Uh, all right. I think it's time for us to do a couple merch messages and explain what they are. They're the best way to interact with the show because instead of just throwing money at the screen, like you might do with other streamers, you get to throw money at the screen and also get great merchandise in your mailbox. We've got a couple of big announcements for the store this week. First, we have a backpack discount update. We have extended the expiry on our dual layer Uh, discount for backpack buyers prior to December 9th to make sure that they can use it towards magnetic cable management if they choose to. I had someone ask me about this. They were like, hey, 
Am I going to be able to use my credit for magnetic cable management? And I was like, yeah. And then the launch was delayed. And now we're like, yeah. Still yeah. Still yeah, but it's going to be a little bit. So uh, the expiry date has been moved to March 15th, which should give you some idea of when magnetic cable management is hopefully coming. Uh, We also have a backpack carabiner update. Source Reddit. This is hilarious. They are in people's (laughs) hands. Check it out. This is it. This is the real deal. This is the kit that you will get with all your replacement bits and bobs. You get the tool for prying open the original uh, pull holders. You get a set of regular pulls from YKK. So this is just in case you've had enough carabiner in your life and you just don't want any more of it. You get a full set of replacement carabiner pulls. These are in titanium alloy of some sort. They're super awesome. Uh, They don't have any hinges on them. They just, uh, we've shown them on the show before, but they basically just have these like cuts in either side. So they're really bendy at the right spot and they work like a carabiner would. And you get the custom designed uh, from the Creator Warehouse team uh, zipper closer uh, tool that is I think, did we end up injection molding this? I don't remember. It's either 3D printed or injection molded, but it's plastic. And you basically turn the thing in order to close it shut. I believe Tynan hosted the video that you will scan this QR code to view, and it shows you exactly how to replace them all. The whole process (laughs) should take less than like 10 minutes to get all the old ones off and all the new ones on. Now, this is really important. I cannot stress this enough. You are to use either these... Or these one time. Just one time. Don't swap back and forth. These are not for, you know, oh, you know, I'm really in a carabiner mood today. uh, Or, no, you know what? I'm really feeling the more basic pull look. One time. If you open them and close them and open them and close them and replace the pulls more than you have to, it will cause the metal to fatigue and it will cause it to break. So, one time. Um, don't tell me what to do. I'm telling you what will cover. <laughs> so that's what I'm telling you. Trust me, bro. Do it one time. <laughs> uh, the last thing for us to shout out this week for the store is that we have stock of the legendary yeah. Honeywell PTM 7950 thermal pads. These are sweet. Uh, They really are. This has been a long time coming. As it turns out, um, Honeywell, not a super easy company for randoms like me to get in touch with. And we were, but we were able to get in touch with someone who was a, a viewer slash fan and had a contact at a distributor for Honeywell and was able to get us access to their PTM 7950, which we actually reviewed. There we go. Reddit told me to buy this. Man, the whole show is like Reddit themed today. Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. About a year and a half ago. Long story short, it's really cool. You put it in the fridge, which solidifies it. You cut it in the shape that you want. You peel the, the, the backings off of it. You put it well, you peel one side, you put it onto whatever it is you're trying to cool, CPU, GPU, or whatever the case may be, you peel the other plastic off of it, and then what happens is once you mount your heat sink or your, well, yeah, heat sink or water block or whatever it is, and it warms up, it changes phases, allowing you to have a perfect mount every time. There's no inconsistency like you might encounter sometimes with thermal paste. So yeah, super cool, and... You can buy this stuff in other places. It's absolutely a thing. But in most cases that we've seen, it is either extremely expensive or it comes from sources where you have no guarantee whatsoever that the sheet of gray schmoo that you're buying is actually PTM 7950 because Honeywell doesn't engage with little piddly, you know, computer sellers they're they're not interested yeah Uh, if you're not if you're not a government entity uh, they're basically not picking up the phone and that's that's not a fair characterization entirely but the point is that they're only really interested in very big fish now it is still not cheap you can see here a six centimeter yeah six centimeter by six centimeter pad is 14.99 but we also offer 
a 200 mil by 160 mil for wait where'd the price go ah yes for 69.99 so that would give you a lot of uses uh let's see if we can oh no did we not oh please tell me we have pictures for scale okay here's the two for scale oh no do we do we have do we have any of them next to cpu okay well whatever six centimeters is pretty big and 20 okay so that's 20 so so okay so here for my american friends that's about uh two-thirds you like fractions right two-thirds of a 12 inch ruler ish ish uh by about half of a 12 inch ruler there you go so that's that's pretty big that's quite a few applications uh is it reusable no it changes phases so it it is definitely something you would want to clean off after you're done anyway really cool product really good performance not like your grandma's thermal pad <laughs> what nothing <laughs> anyway merch messages all you got to do is go to ltdstore.com and in the cart there will be a little box whenever we're live you can fill out a merch message and it'll go to producer dan who will reply to your message forward it to the appropriate person or curate it for me and luke to address on the show so dan why don't you go ahead and hit us with a couple of merch messages sure can do hi lld luke how does having birds limit your life what do you do when you go on holiday is it more difficult than having a cat love all animals yeah it can be kind of annoying um birds are super fragile so there's a lot of things like in the air um like if someone cooks with um like non-stick pans and stuff it can it can put things in the air that can kill the the birds there's other different cleaners and things they might use around their house and whatnot that can be really bad for the birds it's a lot of stuff that would be in the air um, there's even like air fresheners in your car. So having someone else drive them around can even be a problem. Um, so when a full plane chat just said, how do friends bird die from resin 3d printer fumes? Yeah. Not surprised. Not surprised at all. Um, it's for, for us, there is a local bird vet, uh, a, a, avian Born vet, avian vet. Avian vet, is that what it's called? I think so. Sure. Um, and they do boarding. So when we go away, we can leave them at Hopefully the Hopefully not with water. <laughs> That's for fish. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, water. <laughs> Come on down to Luke's waterboarding. Leave your fish with us. We'll make sure they get the finest care. <laughs> <laughs> it was so concerning. So many red flags. Um, but yeah, you can leave them at the vet, which... Uh, it's also nice because then you can get checkups and other stuff done while you're gone. So, yeah. Yeah. Another one I got here. Hi, Wanda.dll. With new AI processing and editing features in smartphone cameras, <clears throat> what is a picture anymore? How much processing is too much? Where's the line? I mean, this is kind of an older controversy now, but uh, the Samsung checks out. Thing. I was about to clear it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's a space station. It's not a moon. And the point is, okay, look, sorry, I'm layering up the Star Wars references it's here. pretty good. Um, um, it's a lot of them, but I liked it. Yeah. <clears throat> I this, oh, man, I was trying really hard for this one. I'm a little ray of Star Wars sunshine. I've, I've, yeah, I wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that one landed very well. No, it really didn't. Just um, like the movies. Yeah, Po! <laughs> yeah, like, I, I like dough, but it doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyway, yes, the Samsung moon photos where people were taking pictures of the moon through their Samsung telephoto, you know, magnified AI zoom nonsense and didn't realize how how trained the yeah. model was to basically take their picture and use it as kind of a hint for a more, much more detailed scan of our picture of the moon that it was just kind of plonking into people's pictures. Wow, gee, look how perfect the moon looks in everyone's pictures on Samsung phones. <clears throat> what even is a picture anymore? What even is truth anymore? How about this? What was a picture ever? What if your picture from, you know, 1951... Was it edited that anyways? That wasn't in color... And was grainy as heck and had, you know, contrast and clarity issues like, OK, uh, one of the one of the big problems with earlier cameras was the way that they handled <clears throat> darker skin tones because they were designed by whites for whites. 
Um, I didn't know about this. Makes sense. Yeah, it's no, it's like this. it's like a whole thing. It's like it's. <clears throat> anyway, modern camera technology and lighting technology has caught up a lot to the point where you can. What? Oh, you are bleeding. When did that even happen? Um, Please don't get blood on the table. Really, Dan? I'll get some towels to clean it off. Um, okay. Is it new? Does it look new? Yeah, it looks new. What? The? It's, it's new blood. Um, well, I'm fine. Fun fact. So I'll that's, just try to not bleed on things. That's the Twilight reboot. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, very very uh, good. Anywho. Very good. The point is. Sure. A really know. paper towel. I mean, you're getting him the form, right? We should make him fill out the form on my show. Serious? Yes, if you cut yourself at work, you have to fill out the form. Maybe it wasn't at work. I just told you it looks fresh. <laughs> they witnessed it. How did that even happen? Do you know how much they witnessed you? Enough that you have to spray your mouth full of silver spray <laughs> paint. Like I all these, all these references. <laughs> 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 Look, it's been a long week, okay? What's happening? It's not it's not even I don't think it's fresh. Oh man. Oh man, this is great. Never injure yourself live on the internet because you are going to have you're going to immediately turn into a hypochondriac because you're going to have what? literally 10,000 people looking up all the horrible awful things that could cause a spontaneous skin lesion or that could infect your blood. Yeah. They're going to have to they're going to have to cut it off above the elbow. It's loop. gone. Uh, uh, yeah, it's over. My whole career. Oh my goodness, you guys. Could be a tick. Yep. Could be could be lupus. Could be a Oh man. Might as well just amputate it now. We don't even have time Speed to get the Speed run hospital. workplace safety form any percent. Let's go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was a pre-existing condition. He scratched a scab LMAO. Did you have a scab there? I don't think so. All right. Well, I mean, how big like I can't even really see it. It's either that or uh oh my what's it's not this, very big. What's this other good one? I can't feel it either. I feel like this happens some other time. Oh no, Tynan! No, look away. Oh no. Oh Safe, yeah, Tynan's not going to let you get away with safety it. Safety man is here. Sudden sudden death syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an infant, okay? It's not like I don't I don't believe you that it's new. I can tell from the color. Look at the color of but those it's pixels. Dry. It's, I mean, yeah, yeah ish. And like there's it, no blood here. Yeah, give me that. It's not dry. There's literally blood spots on here. What there's, are you even talking there's about? There's like little flecks. There's, I think that's dried blood that it's, like got off. It's not. You can tell from the color, Luke. I tried to pull it off. Yeah, yeah. what, you think I'm a fucking idiot? Like... <laughs> You've known me a long time. I'm still gonna try. It's just about to scratch. <laughs> it's merely a flesh wound. I mean, it is a flesh wound, sure. Give you that, but no. it's... It <laughs> wasn't a pimple. It's like a big spot. It's, it's not, not a dry one. Yeah, Stop know. showing everyone your blood. Gross. I'm trying to see it myself. Nice. Oh my goodness. Luke fills out the form. Live on the air. <sighs> Let's go, Dan. Well, you have to give it to yeah, me. Yeah, Luke has to fill out the form. Oh, I mean, no. technically that's proprietary information. It is not. It's protected medical information, and you've told everybody on the internet that he's had a medical incident, and now he can, uh... I think, technically, I told everyone. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh, good. Okay. Yes! So, <laughs> Luke, Luke, you can only sue yourself. The company I'm, lives I'm another day! Do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm not it. a member of the safety committee, so I actually can't fill this out. But we have an AED upstairs if you need it. <laughs> yes, that is... I was gonna bring it for comedy, but I figured that was probably actually kind of irresponsible. Yeah, please don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like playing with fire extinguishers at work. Which we have never done! Allegedly. I actually don't think we have. I don't think so. I was trying to think back in the old nope. house. I was like, that seems very possible back then. I don't think we have. But I don't think we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I brought you a Band-Aid, though. Do you want a Band-Aid? Sure. Just so I don't get blood on anything. Okay, so... I don't... I still don't feel it. Back to our conversation about cameras. So my question is... Yeah. Is that photo that you took in 1951 <laughs> real, or are there all kinds of approximations and flaws in that representation that we only accept because we are used to them. I, I think by that logic, yeah, no, no recreation of anything ever could be real. So um, then, but I do think that intentionally changing something, we intentionally change things all the time. What's a color filter? I mean, yeah, I, mean, I include that. Oh, okay. So then fine, go ahead. But yeah. is that, so is that it changing something through editing? Because the question is, what is a picture anymore? 
I guess my counter question is, what was a picture if you, ever? If you've been on Instagram, what has a picture been this whole time? Because people are, you know, you can see people that are trying to, yeah, shrink their waist or, or make their arms look big or whatever. Yeah. And you'll see, yep. Yeah. Oh, I meant pecs. I meant pecs. Both, to be honest. Sure. Um, and you'll see like the background behind them like warp because yeah. they've like expanded or, or, or uh, contracted something. Oh my goodness. Speaking of contracting something. <laughs> to the pen, Dan. Nice. Uh, oh, wait. Oh my gosh. Uh, this was all planned. It's, oh, no way. Really? Is I this what I think it. it is? Are you allowed to show this off? I might have it. You better. Yeah, are you allowed to show it off? I don't know. I'll go to CW and help you leak it. Tynan, is he allowed? I feel like Tynan would know. Dang it, I don't have it. I can go to CW. And no, it's okay. Their lives it's okay. Ah, oh, that sucks. Wait, is is Tynan actually saying that? No. Okay. Uh, no, no, he's not. I, I, I wanted to, I, I wanted, wanted to, to leak sure. the fail pen, which I think we've actually talked about before. But we, oh, we've talked about it. Yeah, yeah we, we do, we do have a. We I can't have a pen. see. Can you put it on? I oh can't my see. God, this is sad. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That was, that was you not letting go when you try to hand me something. Yeah. Dang. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> it feels better now. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's because I'm a father. Daddy kisses, heal everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'll do this right. Oh, calm down, you guys. I kissed the band aid. I, I don't care either way. Um, and he knew that. Um, <laughs> this is going to end up on the subreddit before the night is out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's going gonna, it's gonna to explode. It's going to break the internet. Better invest in Reddit. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not yet. Not. What are we supposed to be talking about right now? Right. Are they pictures? Right. Are you? No, you're just filling out forms. Okay, well. I am. No, I, I, I think, yeah, I think... Um, some camera nerds are going to come back at me with like certain cameras are going to naturally look different in a certain way mm -hmm. compared to other ones. Or but I, I think I think if you go or in, or even framing, even the way you frame a picture can change the context dramatically. Intensely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're getting to a new man. There's a movie reference here, but I don't remember the exact naming. But we're we're getting to like new ground here, mm -hmm. untread paths. Where, sure. where having uh, things that aren't even like, we're, we're not even necessarily tuning these dials. Like with the Samsung thing, it's just doing that automatically. It's changing the picture. Um, that's Uncharted Waters. There we go. Um, Strange New Worlds. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different references this could be. But I, I, I do think this is new and different and in a way scary because I think it's kind of less obvious. Um. I think there's a lot of ways, like what we were talking about with the like bent backgrounds and stuff. There's quite a few ways that you can mm -hmm. tell if something was edited in the past. This is going to be that's going to be harder, a lot harder. Yep. Time of injury. Uh, I mean, we we could check the timestamp. I bet someone knows. PM. I have no idea. How yeah. specific does it have to be? Uh, just yeah. If you, I mean, very accurate. Yes. I filled out a form for my injury the other day uh, during the shoot. Uh, my my cut was two millimeters long. I believe I caught a hangnail on my pants and you know, really is that what it was? I think so. Yeah, because you were standing next to a, I, a recently metal framed thing. I just assumed you too. touched a sharp object or no, something. No, it was definitely uh, pants ripping my fingers open. That was a fun shoot, though. Maybe we should talk about that a little bit. Uh, let's do let's do our oh oh no yeah we've got topics here. okay we get to do topics so Luke wasn't there. I kind of feel bad for not inviting you. To what? You probably would have wanted to come. The full projector wall thing? The the world's largest gaming displays. Do you know the Weird Al song? Which one? Frank's 2000 inch TV. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Hold on. It sounds awesome. Does it have a music video? I actually I actually don't know if this has a music video. Uh, it would appear that it does not, uh, but it's it's a Weird Al song from I want to say the late '90s or something like that. 
Um, anyway, the point is that he sings this song about, you know, kind of poking fun at keeping up with the Joneses and, uh, and flaunting your wealth through fancy electronics. And it's sort of this, this guy who buys this end game TV that can only be delivered through just utterly decadent means. And, you know, but, you know, thank God I can watch the Simpsons from 30 blocks away. You know, but <laughs> anyway, so, so it's, 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 it's really funny because it's weird. Al and he's always funny. Um, so is what you're trying to say is that those pictures of that were edited? No. Oh, what I'm trying to say is that that display was 2,070 inches. <laughs> we did it. We made Frank's 2000 inch TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it ended up being, I, I forget the exact number, so don't quote me on this. Just wait to watch the video if you want to know the exact numbers. But it was something like 170 feet wide. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But like, wow. By like 30 something feet tall. <sighs> Absolutely enormous. And, oh, okay, right. Dan was there. Yeah. Um, Dan, I'm going to say something that's going to sound controversial, and then there's no pressure to agree with me, but I would love to hear your take. Mm. One of the games that we played on it was Flight Simulator, and I felt that it was more immersive than VR. Depends on the... Well, okay, so I was, I was playing Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, so I can't remember if I even watched anybody do it. I'm not sure. I would, uh, I would say no, in my opinion. Um, certainly not playing it. I felt very claustrophobic in the cockpit. It seemed, mm. uh, it wasn't kind of far back enough. Maybe if we had tweaked the settings and it would be a little bit better. Um, looking around wasn't really possible in the cockpit. You know, yes. maybe if I turned my head, something like that. That's a really wide I would flat say, display. I would say it's a different it's a different kind of immersive to VR. VR is like you're sitting there and this was kind of like the next best thing. This is everywhere. It was kind of more like it it wasn't as as presence and as real as being in VR. Oops. So I played some of the other games but I didn't actually play Flight Sim. Mm -hmm. I watched Dan play Flight Sim. So I was, um, like, I was the passenger of the plane. And maybe the so fact that I didn't have to be focused on the middle. You can look around. And I could, like, really look around out over what feel like life-size vistas. But because the display was so large that it occupied almost my entire field of view, even moving my head around a little bit, the sense of scale was incredible. I got that a lot too. And I, and I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't looking through a periscope, you know? And modern VR headsets have reached a point where the, where the field of view is pretty good. That's right, yeah. But it wasn't even close or, or, but it isn't even close to to that experience of having genuine vastness you actually get the full fov of your eyes and there's no headset and like you're you're there i think i kind of got that feeling the same sort of feeling of being the passenger and just kind of looking but i'm focused dead ahead yes and my entire field of view is just you know langley and that's a thing right is that when I'm playing a game in VR, this doesn't bother me because I'm focused on this. Yeah. And if I want to see something else, I'll do what I would do in real life because we can only achieve our, our maximum resolution over, what, what, what is it, like a 4% of the area we can see? It's and not And only within like a certain area. Like it's not, it's not actually out here that you would so you, you would turn your head anyway so that's really natural but if i was a if i was an observer through that tunnel I, I wouldn't like it whereas being an observer on the giant wall oh there's there's like cool more proper terms for this i don't think this is the right term but suspension of disbelief is, i think is also hurt by something strapped onto your head mm -hmm. like you're always going to be at least somewhat aware like, yeah, you might be convinced that the plank 
you're, you're not convinced, but your brain might be freaking out because you're walking on a plank above a high rise and your brain's like, I don't want to fall, even though you know you're in VR. But you have this thing strapped to your face. There's a, there's a lot of cues to kind of remind you that it's it's not what's actually happening. Thinking back, there was a, a number of moments where, I don't know, everything just kind of fell away. Because uh, you're looking at a monitor, but you're, you're focused quite close to you. And you don't have a headset, so you don't have any of the perception of things touching you or that you're wearing a headset. That's kind of harder to forget. But when you're in front of basically just this window that goes into the sky, um, I think that that kind of dissociation happens a hell of a lot faster than with anything I've felt before. I did not feel like I was looking at a wall. It didn't look like a monitor. It, it looked like I was flying a, a window into um, into something else. And the sense of, of motion that I got was mm. so much more convincing than at least any other flat display that I have ever ever experienced just because of the sheer vastness of it um it was a really cool setup we we actually ended up shooting two videos that day instead of just one we shot one that's like a land center slash badminton center update um because people I had, had i had to approve dan's time for this oh time. okay yeah. yeah people had to um people had more questions uh that they raised than they felt were answered by the first video so we Fair ended enough. up talking Actually, I don't think I've really addressed anyone's questions from the first video. Get but the point it. is, there's cool <laughs> stuff, uh, and, and, we, and we talk about it. Dan goes through some of the networking stuff. Our armored fiber is on site, yeah. uh, ready for installation. So we do a little, uh, we do a little autopsy on the fiber that we're going to be rolling out and stuff like that. It's a really cool video. And then at the end of it, uh, Chase shows off kind of what we have planned for a big projector gaming console corner. And we grab the 120-inch screen from my that used to be in my basement, and we put that up, and then we go, yeah, but it's dark enough in here. We could go bigger, and we kind of just throw as big of an image as we conceivably can with the projector that I had in my basement at the wall until we realize, okay... Yeah, you can only go so big no matter how dark it is before it starts to look washed out and, yeah. and garbo, right? Then we go from 2,700 lumens to working with an AV company that specializes in these kinds of deployments to a multi-projector 12,000 lumen setup. And yeah, there's, there's, there's no way to... There's there's nothing I can say other than it's unlike anything I've ever experienced. I kind of did want to see it, but I'm sorry. Uh, can, no, 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 no. Can no. you imagine that at 240 hertz? I know it was only at 60 HDR 4K 240 like, hertz. Yeah, we'll have 2,000 inch wall. I guess what you're saying is you want to redo it. Yeah, do it better. Yeah, do, Buy it, do a it better. Bigger Let's... building. No, I no. <laughs> That that's that's going to be a no. Um, thank you for the suggestion, though, Dan. Appreciate you. You could use it for the new town. Uh, there's not going to yeah. be a new town. Yeah. None of these people We're know what you're talking about. It's on the pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes it better. No, inside <laughs> jokes are not good. All right, Dan. Do you want to hit us with one more? Uh, whoop, wrong button. Yep, yeah, sure. I got one more. Let's see. Uh, evening DLL. What happens if the CPUs binned for the labs test benches fail? Do you restart the process? Are there any spares? Ooh. Are they expected to be obsolete or replaced before they fail? I really hope they don't. Um, but as part of our process, we're going to be retesting anyway. And with new Agisa updates, BIOS updates, uh, driver change. updates, the, f the ones that we're using may change anyway. So... Yeah. It's something we're going to have to go through yeah. regardless of whether one of them dies or whether one of them doesn't. So it's just, I, I think it's just, uh, oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. What? Remember I was all concerned about showing people the scale of the thermal pads? I have them. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think of that. They're right here. Oh, I didn't realize this was a thing that happened, probably because I'm pretty out of it, but yeah cool yeah anyway so the big ones i mean you're you're supposed to cut kind of both of them but one of yes. these is like this is you're you're installing a cpu you're installing one cpu you one, one giant cpu or four smaller ones 
Oh, yeah. yeah you, could, you could do four small Yeah, ones. you totally could. Like, I could do, I could easily do uh, four Ryzen 7000s with this. But unquestionably, you'll be able to get one install for a CPU from that, pretty uh, much regardless of size. Yes. I can't think of one that wouldn't work. Uh, I think some of the big epics, you'd probably cover all the dice. Probably be fine. But I just wouldn't. Uh, you, you, you just get this big. You just spent nine hundred dollars, you know, two thousand dollars on a CPU. Just get a proper thermal pad for it. Uh, yeah. So that's what the big mama is for. That's a big thermal pad. So that's a lot of CPU installations. Yeah, you can cut that to whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And Sarah designed really nice packaging for it and yeah, everything. Sure. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about looks that. Very professional. Showed up to work. Show up to cool your CPU for you. Or whatever else. Thanks, Luke. You're doing great today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to crush him at Super Checks tonight. <laughs> if I even make it. He uh, beat me last week. I'm so upset. Got him. He's, I'm so upset. He was sick. It, that last game, I'm still unhappy. I think I was less sick then, funny enough. But. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> You're going down this week. I outshot him two to I'm one. Also, I'm also grievously wounded. I outshot him two to one. And he outscored me 3-2. Got him. So unhappy. <laughs> Goalie standing on his head. Anyway, the yeah, point is, uh, let's was. jump into our next topic. Dude, what? I've had some insane manual blocks. Insane. Yes, I know. <laughs> I was there. You have too. But like, you know. <laughs> you know, you didn't get a lot more goals on me. Um, nope. <laughs> all right, what are we talking about now? I also got a lot less shots, though. <laughs> uh, Troy Hunt is having an issue with his Sono setup. Oh? I feel like I'm going to regret going down this rabbit hole before even asking, but here goes. We have eight Sonos devices, three wired, the rest wireless. We have massive Wi-Fi coverage with Ubiquiti Mesh Gear, but are now having major problems playing audio to multiple rooms with constant dropouts, regular unable to connect to device errors, units appearing offline, and so on. Firmware up to date everywhere, power cycles and network reboots, but the problems persist. I'm guessing it's somehow network related, but I don't even know where to begin on this one. Ideas. I have two ideas. Idea number one is if you have the 2.4 gigahertz radios enabled on all of your Ubiquiti units, go through and strategically disable a bunch of them. I actually ran into this recently with my setup where I had everything on default. I had all the 2.4 gigahertz radios on and I had them all set to automatic channel selection. And on recent firmware, this was very recent, they were all selecting channel one for some reason. And with all all of them, I have something like eight access points in my house or something like that. With all of them on channel one, even just the regular pinging of, hey, are you there, was annihilating the available, um, like the available, band, uh, not bandwidth, but just the available spectrum. Yeah. Like just the utilization was capped. And so I was having dropouts, not with my Sonos devices necessarily, but with some devices. Kind of everything. And I was getting music cutting out. However, I went through and um, Jake actually recommended this. Picked one per floor to go to 2.4 gigahertz and then disabled 2.4 on all the rest of them. Uh, that resolved the dropouts I was getting from other devices, but I was still getting cutouts from my Sonos units. And Yvonne made the suggestion that um, you know, or, or not suggestion, but she asked a question because she's been married to me for a thousand years and listens and, you know, she just tries to participate and it's delightful. Uh, she's not into tech, but she knows a lot is what I'm trying to say. And she kind of goes, oh, well, you know, could it be a wireless issue? And I go, no, it doesn't make any sense. They're all wired. All of my Sonos units except one are wired. And then... I went into the app and I found that... Are they all working wirelessly anyways? Even though they are all, plugged, all plugged in, in, there's a setting in the app to disable oh. wireless on them. Now, I don't know for sure that they were working wirelessly, but what I will say is after I painstakingly went through and disabled wireless on all of them, which is a horrible experience, by the way, Sonos, if you're watching, Should because... everything. Because you can't do it wholesale. Because as part of the process, you have to navigate through like 
two or three different sub menus to even get to that button for that one. And number three, it has to go through a process where it determines if it has a wired connection before it will allow you to disable the wireless connection, which I understand. But what I don't understand is why it takes like 30 seconds for it to determine that. And can I just go on a side rant here? Why the ever loving f does it take so long for a device to tell you if it has a fucking internet connection? If it has one or not? Yes. It drives me bat crap crazy. Whether it's a game console or a TV where it does that. Or a, man, remember the Wii? Yeah. How long it would take to know if it had a fucking internet connection? <laughs> How many milliseconds does it take to ping something? Do you have an interconnect connection? Yes or no? Yeah, I wonder if like I wonder what exactly they're doing. I'm sure I'm I'm sure I think I'm they're probably doing more than that. Obviously. Yeah. What is it? I'm not sure. And I feel like that there has to be some convoluted phone home thing instead of just like ping Google or something. Some of the newer ones do a speed test <clears throat> and they will report the result of that. Got it. Okay. And and that makes sense. You cannot determine how fast a connection is without transferring some amount of data over some period of time longer than probably the you know nine milliseconds yeah, that like it would take it, to ping the nearest stable? google data center do we want to tell the user that there is an internet connection if we don't know it's stable yet but a lot of them don't <laughs> appear to be doing that and yeah. just yeah i'm not sure just take a long time there's there's a there's a lot of stuff like that that i just i gotta tell you guys i just don't really understand um with how many millions of cycles per second a modern processor runs at, why does it still take just about exactly as long to plug in an Ethernet cable and for it to say, you're connected? Well, I still, I still feel like it's probably because it's doing external things. Well, no, because... No, no, I'm not even talking about that right now. I'm talking like when you plug in an Ethernet cable. Or plug in an Ethernet cable. Yeah. Okay, it, it has to negotiate the link speed, sure, but how long does that take? So you're talking even, even just your local network? Yeah. So just, even just detecting like that it's plugged you, in at all? When you just plug in a cable. I haven't had this problem until uh, actually my, my work desktop. My work desktop's a huge pain. Sometimes it just will not accept an Ethernet connection. I have to restart the whole computer and then it works. You know what you might want to do is manually set your uh, speed and duplex. Um, I've, I've found that the two and a half gig in, uh, in that office is a little bit sketchy. And if I, depending on your chipset, if you set it to gigabit, then it'll just work every time. Um, so, okay. I'm answering my own question. I do know some of why it takes longer. Um, if for example, there's some packet loss, then it will, it will take a while to yeah. figure out, okay, what is the appropriate link speed for this connection? But there are a lot of things in the tech world that are operating at, you know, millions of cycles per second that seemingly should be instantaneous, but take a very, very long time. Sometimes even Some things that are happening like locally. Extreme low priority. Yeah, I like guess even that's, if the CPU is running away faster, it, it might not be allowed to use any more than it used to use in the past. Uh, but really though. <laughs> Like if I could just have it happen instantly, I mean that would be that would be great. Yeah, but then if they if they did that every time you plug in a cable and your computer just like, Ugh, then they're gonna get a bunch of complaints about. I'm it. sorry, but I'm not convinced it would. It would. Ugh. Yeah, that's probably fair. I, I'm not convinced. Like even plugging in like a plugging in like a USB drive, why is that not instantaneous? I feel to, like to it pop is for up? me. It's not instantaneous. It's pretty fast. It's reasonable. It's pretty fast. I'm not convinced it's any faster than it was 10 years ago, though. Yeah. Our computers are a lot faster than they were 10 years ago. It's, it's kind of like how you pl you'll play an old game, and the loading times still suck. And you're like, what was the bottleneck here? Because my CPU is four times faster. My storage is 40 times faster. It, my it could be such a huge range of things. It could be it could be timeouts. It could be uh, the amount of things that old games based off of your system clock. Um, it could be it could be a, a yeah. That a one triggers me things. so hard. I again again 
again, I do know some of the reasons for this. It just bothers me probably more than it should. There could be things where like it needs to do a thing and then make sure that that thing is functioning for a set amount of time. That's what I mean by yep. timeouts. So like the timeouts might even be uh, well-intentioned. But yeah. Um, anyway, in response to Troy, I would take the three wired ones. So first I would do the 2.4 gigahertz thing. Then I would take the three wired ones and I would go into your Sonos app and manually disable wireless on them so that you know for sure that they are actually using the wire. And then that will, that will hopefully mean you will have fewer devices fighting for airtime. Anyway. Are you just hoping he watches this part of the show? I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, you are uh, like tweeting it at him. Or I'll, I'll tweet it at him. There you go. Are you doing that now? <laughs> well, what is that not acceptable to you? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Linus still hasn't realized Troy already solved the problem. In the next tweet. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. All right. Well, let's see what the solution was. <laughs> Um, I was unaware of Sonos Net, so on a hunch, I pulled the power on the three wireless units and power cycled all the others. They're running perfectly now. Okay, so I don't know exactly... Oh, wait. The plan now is to join the three remaining units directly to Wi-Fi and cancel out <laughs> Sonos Net altogether. So much for the wired connections always being the most reliable path. Interesting. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Good job, Troy. Cool. Anyway, I would have been curious to know if the other thing would have worked. <laughs> I actually do not have issues with my wired Sonos devices, though, other than when it turns out they are... Oh, by the way, did I say that it worked They're perfectly now wireless. for me? No, but, but I think I assumed it was implied. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the show is brought to you by AG1. Luke is gone. Yeah, we're back on YouTube now. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Uh, just in time to tell you about our sponsor, AG1. Uh, oh, we're not going to have visuals. Neat. Well, there yeah, were some... Yeah, you will. Oh, I will. Yeah. Okay. Is this you trying to build a healthy routine? Our sponsor, AG1, is covering all the categories for you. One scoop of AG1 has 75 different vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, and it's made to help you focus, give you a boost of energy, and promote gut health. Luke, Dennis, and a few other members of our team here have tried or even use AG1 daily, with Maria, our thumbnail artist, drinking it for over a year, even before they partnered with us. She says she likes the flavor, and it is super convenient to cover your daily supplements. Plus, AG1 might might save you a few dollars compared to purchasing all the different vitamins separately. They have over 37,000 five-star reviews from their customers and a 90-day money-back guarantee. And now you can try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash wanshow. Check it out at the link down below. The show is also brought to you by Vessi. Sometimes people might not compliment you after you shave your beard. That's okay. But people will definitely applaud you if your socks are dry after a long walk in the rain. Our sponsor, Vessi, is here to help you stand on your feet when you're in a stormy situation. They claim their shoes are 100% waterproof thanks to their Dymatex technology, and even the most torrential downpours don't stand a chance. They have all kinds of different shoes for different occasions, from slippers to their most adventure-ready Ulta High Tops, which are designed to take on slippery, slushy, chilly winter conditions. And their weekend and everyday class Classic sneakers are great for just wearing about. Don't let the rain stop you from moving. With a 365-day guarantee, you can leave your wet socks in the past. Head over to Vessi.com slash WANSHOW and get 15% off your first purchase with code WANSHOW. Finally, the show is brought to you by MKBHD. Just kidding. The Ridge. But also MKBHD. Uh, Marquez joined The Ridge, our longtime partner, as their chief creative partner. This is very exciting news. You guys probably already know The Ridge. They make minimalistic and functional wallets and a bunch of other accessories. Uh, the wallet can hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash with either a money clip or an elastic band. And you can even add a coin tray that carries coins, keys, and other small items. The Ridge is known for its quality. Only the highest grade materials are used in their construction. Plus, they offer a lifetime warranty to keep your mind at ease. You can check out their new leather wallet. 
Oh, wow. A ridge, but with leather? What? Every leather ridge wallet is made with oil wax and full grain leather, and the ridge doesn't just make wallets. Their key case is also a favorite of ours here at LMG. With over 80,000 five star reviews and a 99 day risk free trial, you must try the ridge out. And for WAN Show viewers, you can use code WAN to get 10% off your purchase and free shipping. We're going to have that linked down below. All right. For everyone who's still watching, why don't we go ahead and jump into a new topic? Merch messages. Oh, uh, let's do a topic. Okay. Yeah. Then then we'll do then we'll do something else. Um. Oh wow. Uh Oh oh boy. Uh okay. Google apologizes for Gemini's biased image yeah. generation. Wait, had you not heard of this? I had not seen any pictures. I had only oh. seen a headline so far. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is this is really. Wow, this is really something. Um, 1943 what German soldier. What the f am I looking at here? Uh, okay, Luke, do you want to walk us through this one? Because yeah, there's a lot we, to unpack. I think I'll just read the, the thing and sure. then I'll, I'll start unpacking after that. Google has temporarily removed the image generation feature from its Gemini chatbot following a widely reported problem where it would refuse to generate images of white people or Latinos and would insert the keyword diverse into unrelated prompts. In at least one case, this resulted in generating images of a group of multiracial 1943 German soldiers, as we just showed you. According to Google, this was caused by a miscalibrated mechanism meant to counteract other another well-known issue with early image generation models, namely that they would overweigh the most common stereotypical images <laughs> in their databases, right. leading to a generator that would only produce men when asked for a scientist or would produce a white doctor uh, even when explicitly asked for a black doctor. Google has apologized for the overcorrection. Google likewise appears to have a moderation system based on spelling. Brilliant. Uh, meaning that it is easily bypassed by intentional mistyping of a forbidden word. Discussion question. Is there a correct amount of stereotyping that an AI should use? Shouldn't Google be able to find a less dumb way of fixing these issues? I think the issue specifically... Um, if you want to ask me, is not that it, uh, if it was like more likely to do a certain thing, but would do a range of things, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, except that a lot of these prompts, because generating more than one image is, uh, very expensive. A lot of these prompts that I've used in the past only spit out one at a time anyway. I believe Gemini tends to do four. Sure, but okay. If we're that. talking about Gemini specifically, then I see oh, yeah, I, I see your solution being okay. You could have three that just use the images that it's trained on, and then one that's kind of a like shot in the dark. Uh, whereas for any of the ones that only spit out one image, if it gave me, I mean, well, really, especially top right and bottom left. If it gave me either of those, I mean, this Bottom maybe right's also well, maybe he's the soldier. I don't know. I mean, she's wearing the uniform, right? Yep. I mean, well, this 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 is just this is just a lot to unpack in general. It's also like an American-ish looking soldier. Yeah, that's like down. She seems to be helping. Yeah. So her her uh, storage pack that's on her back hip, I think, is upside down. I like her hair. She's kind of sick. It's just not here. But it's it, then it is here, yeah, and it's here, yeah, but not here, yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. Um, but I think, I think, I think forcing terms ends up being a problem because it overcorrects, as we have just seen. But on the other hand, you can't just generate men when you search for doctor. Totally. But if you search specifically for... Um, yeah, yeah. So, like, the, the, the unaltered one is also too far, though, because, uh, again... Um, 
<laughs> internal hair routing ducting in the uniform. They would they would oh, they would overweigh oh, no, common she, she, she pulled languages. a Mulan because women weren't allowed to serve in Germany then anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> perfect. Um, they would overweigh easy, the most common answer. stereotypical images in the databases, leading to a generator that would produce men uh, when asked for science. Or this is the key point in my opinion: would produce a white doctor even when explicitly asked for a black doctor. So the original way it was going was also wrong. Yes. Because you're not even getting specifically what you asked for yeah. out of it. So it, they needed to correct off of that because the original version is just bad. Um, but this is just too far. Um, I think I think uh, if you weren't already thinking this, I think this is quite a slap in the face for uh, the observation that this this is a very in-your-face obvious version of this but all of these systems are going to be tuned to something whatever you, you company's version of this yep. that you're using is going to be tuning it to serve you certain types of things and you need to understand that your worldview or your exposure or whatever else is going to be and just wait painted until they're tuning it specifically for you yeah so they'll they'll yeah. they'll creep your facebook and be like oh well you are you're super i'm gonna pick a no, I'm not going to pick anything controversial. I will pick uh, mops. You were really into mops. You are you are pro You're a mop enthusiast. You are pro the mops that were already there, or you are pro the brooms that came later. You know, whatever whatever it is. And so when you search for uh, you know a patriotic soldier, it's going to show you mop soldiers or whatever else. Whereas if you, you know, if you are more on the side of the brooms, then it's going to show you broom soldiers, you know. Right. So if I searched soldier, for example, maybe it would give me a Canadian soldier. Exactly. Because it has the context that I'm uh, maybe in Canada or maybe it knows that I'm a Canadian citizen or something like that. And remember with how much they know about you, it might give you a Canadian, sol it might give you a Canadian sniper. Yeah. Yeah. Because you'd be more into marksmanship yeah. than than necessarily, you know, uh, being a, a tanks tank tank uh, yeah. operator gunner, but whatever. There's a range of roles in there, but yeah. sure, yeah. Uh, but but part of it, a member of a tank crew, yeah. like I, I, I it, it that might would be, be my guess. It might be, and and it 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 depends on what the uh, what's driving a, a tanky. Very nice, Dan. Um, it depends on on what's driving the value for this thing. So a conversation that we were talking about earlier where you're the product, it's like, okay. So what are you serving me? Are there product placements? Is it yeah. going to give you a Canadian soldier using a particular rifle with a particular scope on it? Yeah. Is it going to try to push me into, you know, uh, recruitment for the military somehow? Um, Ugh. Is it, is it, is it only going to show soldiers that are like, look very, you know, successful and clean cut? Is it going to show soldiers that look like you? Maybe. So you can see yourself in that more easily. Like there's, there's lots of ways that these things can be tuned. Man, we are and, so close to dystopia that like. We're basically here. Yeah. Yeah. So like, this is, this is something that, uh, just, just because this one was super obvious, if this goes away. The, the root problem is very much still here. Just because it, it might not be spitting out images of... Um, and they can hide it. They oh, can yeah. hide that root problem by doing what we're talking about. Yeah. By tuning it to output something that you expect. And these inputs are things that you will give them. You are going to give them willingly helping them build their profile for you because it will make the tools work better and we like these tools and they're convenient. So it'll spit out nine images for you and it'll say, which one do you think was the best one? And it'll remember which and one you'll you selected. And it'll be like the Aryan one. And it'll be like, all right, good to know. <laughs> and you'll get more of that. <laughs> you need to start self-analyzing with some of the results you start getting. <laughs> You just type in soldier and it just gives you a 1943 German soldier and you're like, oh, <laughs> uh oh, who's wearing a jersey that says Lafreniere on the back. It's all open. Oh, no. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, Sounds no. like Google to me. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think don't forget about Meta even more. And Amazon more easy for them to be nefarious. With and the maybe? U.S. Army <laughs> yeah. and other armies. Yeah. Remember the U.S. Army was on Twitch. That was yeah. a whole thing. Yeah. Was a, I mean, 
<laughs> uh, are they not anymore? I was just going to check, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Ooh, U.S. Army go. Esports. Mm, four years ago. Maybe they're not. Uh, schedule. Here we go. Oh, no. Last stream two years ago. Okay, so this particular thing is no longer a thing, but don't kid yourself. Um, I'm sure they're around somehow. It's definitely a thing. I had no idea how into merchandising the U.S. Army was. Yeah. We oh, have yeah. a video coming shortly. I actually reviewed the edit for it. It's a great video. I, I just reviewed the edit before WAN show today. Um, on these like kind of um, wannabe razor peripherals. We actually showed them on the show uh, a couple weeks ago, I think. And one of the other things that this company that makes these uh, rip-off razor peripherals does is they make U.S. Army branded stuff. And as part of that rabbit hole, we went looking for all the things with U.S. Army co-branding on them. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. There's anything and everything with United States Army co-branding, it's absolutely wild. Oh, there's tons of stuff. Like yeah. they should pay you to wear it, you know, because you oh. served or something. Not, <laughs> not you pay them to to. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe I'm missing something here, but good gravy. I wonder, like, are you okay? I don't know. Like, do you have acid reflux I'm or trying, like? I'm trying to hold it together. Are you? Do you need? To, do man, you need they're a not bucket? even cheap. Look at the uh, yeah. Oh man. $40 t-shirt. It's amazing how often we take flack for the pricing on our store. Oh my god. Sorry guys. Our shirts are $20. Like we we I don't know anyway, it doesn't matter. The point oh, is Oh, it got more expensive, $44. Oh, hold on, I'm back to your laptop. Is that cuz there's print on the back? Is there no pr Yeah, I don't think there's print, print on the back does cost more and that's a pretty reasonable upcharge for double-sided printing. It's mm -hmm. uh, it adds a complete extra step with an additional screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, they've got they've got a nineteen dollar. Well, what's a PT shirt? Personal training. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay. They, 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 there's some reasonably priced stuff here. I have no idea what the quality of any of this is. What is ArmyGearUS.com? Though some, is this some official? Of their discounts get pretty fat. I don't think this is uh, actually. I have no idea. Uh, no, this isn't. This isn't the army, Luke. I don't know, dude. Man, you're. Are you? Are you like? Uh, no, it's Ar army co-branded. I think, right? I don't. I don't know. I, that looks pretty army co-branded to me. I have no idea. This Under Armour Duty Honor Country T, Duty Duty Honor Country. Uh, did they just take every keyword? I think that's one of their like their tagline things, like oh. on their on their coins and stuff. Got it. Got so it, I got think it, there would it, usually be like a symbol between each word or something. People are saying that is the logo. So okay. Yeah, that that is definitely the U.S. Army logo. That's what I was saying. Physical training. Oh, there you go. Not per personal training, sure, whatever. NATO. I knew it meant like going to work out. NATO apparently streamed a gaming tournament, but the Twitch channel is no longer there for some reason. Wild. <laughs> um, anywho, why don't we jump into? We've got a few merch messages. Dan, want to hit us? Yeah, sure thing. Let's see here. Maybe we should fetch Luca Bucket at some point. I think he's. I did offer him earlier. Show. I'll, I'll be fine. Okay. Mm <clears throat> uh, yeah, I got uh, two here for you. Hi, DLL. The American Red Cross released a VR training app for lifeguards, but it needs the Quest Two or Three. Linus, do you think this would have helped you become a better lifeguard, and can it help others? I think it could have helped with repetitive training exercises, like going through the motions literally of you know working on cpr compressions or um or to to practice like if they have a, if they have like a simulated pool that you can stand next to and try to spot distressed swimmers and oh, stuff yeah. like that try to try to get your like make it make it, make it a game try to get your time down <gasps> Yeah, like how fast you you recognize a problem. Like I could see, I could see stuff like that being kind of useful. But when it comes to the nuts and bolts of can you actually haul someone's you know soggy butt out of a pool? No, you need real life. You need to you need to actually train. So if I was doing a training program and I had homework for the weekend where I had to get my response time down to you know three seconds to spots or whatever yeah i sure i could see being kind of useful for that i also think if you're if you're doing stuff like if you're if you're training um once you've gotten them out of the water aid yep. i don't know what different forms of that that would come up in but if it's like training that you do with a dummy yep if you could still do that training with a dummy but while vr strapped in so that yep. it's like it's more realistic, mixed reality i think it might help desensitize in situations where it might be 
rough. Yeah, stuff that's like kind that. of interesting. Um, another thing I could see it be really <laughs> being really useful for with mixed reality is things like um, you know landmarking or um, like uh, okay, so one of the things that you need to do if you're going to do mouth to mouth resuscitation, like uh, breathing assistance, is is you have to tilt the head back, and so it, if it would tell you like, hey, you didn't tilt back far enough because it's actually monitoring, it could show you like uh, like a you know like a green shade for how far back the head the head needs to go in order to open up the airway or something like that sure i could see it being very useful i haven't used their software though i have no idea if it does any of what i just said it could just be stupid i'm not sure but yeah absolutely i mean uh commercial applications for vr are heavily heavily uh training focused uh one of the things that um Oh, bananas. Who was it? Uh, yeah, one of the things Intel showed back when I checked out their fab a while back was uh, maintenance on the machines. Is it, It's Microsoft HoloLens driven. Yeah. So it'll just show you, like you could be a complete nobody off the street and you could perform maintenance on one of these multi-million dollar machines just by putting on a HoloLens and it'll be like, okay, go over there and get that toolkit and then open up that toolkit, uh, grab this and you pick it up. It's like, nope, not that one. Like, like really any monkey with training could like. Yeah, HoloLens is totally a thing. It's just not yeah. a thing in the consumer space. Um, military has applications for it as well. Yep. Yeah. All right, Dan, hit us. Sure thing. Hi, DLL. I work in live theater lighting. Tungsten bulbs are being banned by the government. The alternative is LEDs that cost $10,000 and up to achieve a similar quality light. Will small theater survive this? Yes, um, but not be not... <clears throat> Not with the products that are available today, necessarily. The advancements in LED lighting over the last 10 years have been a thing to behold. I had this conversation with someone on set a little while ago, and I kind of went, okay, let's look at all the major tech categories. CPU, GPU, networking, uh, and there's some solid arguments to be made for a lot, of those, a lot of those categories in terms of, you know, what's advanced the most? over the last 10 years. And I was like, and then I'm going to, I'm going to tell me what you think is advanced the most. And then I'm going to surprise you with my answer and see if we can kind of, we play these kinds of games when we're in between takes and stuff like that. And they, they gave their answers and I was like lighting and they're like, huh? Because there are certainly ways that, you know, even, even a stupid, you know, Intel 14 nanometer plus 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 refresh has more advanced technology in, in it than, than, you know, one generation of lighting and to, to the next three generations of lighting potentially. But in terms of what has made an impact on our business um, and in terms of the, the change in quality and cost in that time, I don't know if anything touches LED lighting. And like Veritasium had that video that went viral recently on the challenges of developing the blue LED and how just LEDs were up against this wall forever and then development happened like wildly fast. And that wild fast development is very much still happening. Like in the last 10 years, we've gone from, flore we've gone from fluorescence being dominant to LEDs being not just dominant, but now you can change the color temperatures on them on the fly because these controllers have come down in cost by so much. Um, you can have arrays of LEDs at different color temperatures and they can, do, they can do mixing or they can switch between one or the other or both. The brightness of them, the efficiency of them, everything is getting absolutely incredible. And at the same time, costs are plummeting. The first lights we ever bought were fluorescents because that was the only thing that had a CRI or basically like a, like a, like um, an accurate enough color uh, to use for filming. And then over the next few years, LED lights showed up, but they were prohibitively expensive. Over the following three to five years, LEDs got cheap, like 
why would we buy anything else cheap? Nothing else makes any sense cheap. And I just don't really see it slowing down. Um, so in a bit, and I'm not going to tell you exactly when, but in a bit, no, I absolutely foresee those traditional lights being replaceable with LEDs. And I don't know where you are and when exactly these bands are going into effect. There have certainly been some short-sighted bands that have destroyed entire industries and have made absolutely no sense. I mean, uh, you could make a strong argument against the plastic bag ban that went into effect in Vancouver recently, where it's like, okay, but is anybody talking about the energy cost of um, paper bags? Is anybody talking about the reusability of those plastic bags compared to the paper ones? Like, I get it. I get a ton of uses out of my plastic bags. Yeah. And not everybody does. Lots of people just throw them away. But like... There's issues like that with the straws as well. Like yeah. We switch to paper straws, but there's a lot of like different chemicals and things in the paper straws. It's not just like paper in a roll. That isn't even just paper in a roll. Fair like enough. that's bleached yeah. and everything. Like, yeah. And then you're putting I'm, that in liquid and it's soaking into the liquid and then you're drinking that and it's like, oh, this is actually... Glass straws are the way to go. What's wrong with pasta? Just use pasta. I like pasta Twizzlers. or Twizzlers. <laughs> I'm not going to... Gonna... Arc Twizzler. <laughs> Arc hey! Twizzler. There you go. Nice. Call back to earlier in the show. <clears throat> um, where, where was I going with this? I forget what the question even was. Dan, Dan started... I forgot we were doing uh, tung just... Tungsten bulbs oh, yeah, are right. now banned. <laughs> LEDs help expensive. So, yeah, I'm not saying that there's any guarantee that you guys will, will be able to get there in time. And honestly, even if the new lights are cheap... I, I know that live productions can be very budget constrained. You might just not have, you might just not have the budget to replace them at all Do you, is, with is, anything. It, and you certainly can't yeah. sell something that's banned, so you can't even recoup any of your old costs. Is this is this like a you have to replace it now thing, or is it when your current existing thing dies, you must get a it, new one? It's probably a right now thing. And I was I was looking at um, I was looking at something recently that was kind of like this. That was basically like, here's a, here's a ban that's happening now. And everyone was like, yo, this is completely untenable for us. Like you're, you're basically just killing our industry. I can't remember which one it is for the life of me, but I hope not. I personally love live theater. It's not for everyone. Um, but you, if you ask, if you asked me, Hey, me too. you can game for three hours or you can watch a movie for three hours, or you can do just about any kind of passive form of entertainment for three hours, or you can go to a live theater show for three hours. I will take the live theater show every yep. single time. Yeah, I just, absolutely. I, I love it. It's raw. It's real. It's fun. It's intimate. Um, you know, oh, I, I'm it's very human. I, I have a really hard time enjoying a show that's in a room with tens of thousands of people. It's just, it's not really my vibe. Uh, whereas a few hundred. Yeah, I can, I can get into that. Um, yep. Like you can, you can find that person who's laughing really loud at every, at every joke, which, I don't know. It doesn't bother me like it would in a movie theater. You know, like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's human. Yeah. It's a really good way of putting it. I, well, I there's love a, there's, theater. There's a lot of stuff like that too. Like if, um, you know, if like, if NASA puts a, a thing on the moon, it's like, no, well, is there a person in it? No. Most people aren't going to care. It, does it necessarily make that much of a difference? Like we might, we might even be getting the same amount of accomplishment but if there isn't a human involved, a lot of people are just like, meh. It's interesting. That that aspect, the whole like viewership on space launches and space activities that involve people versus ones that don't involve people and how uh, actually well studied those metrics are has been something that's been very interesting for me when looking at all these new AI tools and stuff. Oh. Um, people generally care a lot more when other people are involved sure i mean it's the only reason that you know the olympics gets to be a thing is they they get you they get you focused in on the stories yeah of the people nobody nobody actually cares about javelin other than the handful of people who care about javelin yeah. um you but know for, for three for 3.96 years and then the Olympics rolls around and they, and they, and they tell all these stories and the stories are interesting because we've been checked out of them for 
over three years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's the, it's the human element that matters for any of this. And it's just, you're closer to it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, even like even a live sporting event, I just I find it's it's huge. And I've been told a lot of times that I should go and watch lower level sporting events. And I probably would enjoy them more, but I've just been kind of busy ever since following a sports team is actually kind of a lot of work. <laughs> like, you, Especially if, if if you're like me and you kind of tend to get into things like I'm going to want to know what's going on with you know the other teams that they compete against and all the players and the and the ones who are getting called up and the ones who are getting sent down and the coaches and the, i don't know it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing yeah anyway what are we supposed to be doing dan ah more topics some more topics sure. yeah. what do you want to talk about luke i don't know man oh how about this uh do i do i get do i get an i was right yet um the playstation portal has been um Hacked to play PSP games. Hacked. Uh, it's called PPSSPP. <laughs> <laughs> and will allow the console to locally run emulated games for the PlayStation Portable, which is what many gamers hoped that the portal might be able to do when it was first announced. One of the devs behind the hack, Google security researcher Andy Nguyen, known as The Flow, has stated that the hack is not yet ready for release, but he demonstrated shots of GTA 3 running on a PS Portal. It can also apparently wow. run Tekken 6 and Minecraft. Um, this is one of the things that I feel like maybe we didn't emphasize enough in our video, but we definitely mentioned when talking about the value of the PlayStation portal. The fact that by the time, because remember, we did our video a bit later, and by the time we did it, people were already starting to poke and prod at it with at least a little bit of success. And we were like, uh, this thing uh, might be, uh, you know, something might happen. And obviously, you know, like we're not going to be the ones to put the work into it, but it's the kind of device that is just screaming for someone to figure out how to work around Sony's walled garden. And I don't think I've seen an Android device that has not ultimately been pwned. Yeah. That one that people care about. Yes. Um, and speaking of Sony devices and being pwned, uh, PSVR 2 is getting self-pwned. Sony has announced that they will be adding PC support to the PSVR 2, hopefully sometime this year. The headset had weaker than expected initial sales when it came out last year, only selling around, man, this is wild, like even, you know, oh, this sucked, uh, selling around 270,000, 270, 100, 200, you good? 270,000 units there you go. of the 2 million that Sony manufactured for its Ooh. launch window. Okay, so that doesn't sound like a sales shortfall. That sounds like a manufacturing uh, overestimation. But anyway, That's as of now, only about a million units total have been sold. A discussion question. Would you switch over to the PSVR 2 if it could play games on Steam? It's a pretty good headset. And it's a pretty good price. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't, but I do think if you were like getting into VR, it's a heck of a, yeah, it's price is like very well positioned. How much is it again? It's like 200 bucks, isn't it? Yes. Oh, PPSSPP is apparently, uh, is apparently the name oh, of a good wow. PSP no, emulator, not. not the name of the hack. So correction. Thank Apparently you for playing chat. 750 bucks. Is that Canadian? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's Canadian dollars. <sighs> Dude, it's OLED. Oh. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only really remembering, like, I, I've never tried this one. I've only tried the first one. No, it's really good. It's, uh, it's okay. yeah, it's 550 US. Okay. Um, and that includes controllers, like good controllers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's reasonably compelling. <laughs> uh Oh wow, yeah, really high res too. Wow. All right. This is interesting. The extremely popular new game Helldivers 2 has been plagued with yeah. server issues since launch. Uh which Arrowhead CEO Johan 
Johan, has acknowledged is largely due to insufficiently optimized backend code and the time needed to onboard additional engineers to their backend team, currently consisting of four developers. He has recommended that gamers, especially cash-strapped gamers, hold off on buying it until the issues are addressed. Based. That is unheard of. Yeah. I, I To be fair, if they had a, a sales goal, they're I'm genuinely estimating probably like 50 to 100 times beyond what that sales goal was at this point. Right. Um, because they are just smashing it right now. Um, so they definitely don't need it. And it might actually be like the, the good press from saying this is, is likely just worth it. Exacerbating the problem, many players have been squatting AFK on servers in order to avoid wait times, which Arrowhead Studios will apparently be addressing in an upcoming patch. Cool. Yeah, guys, when there's an issue with something, doing things that make the issue worse for everyone is bad. My favorite one is like when a login server goes down and then people just sit there. Yeah. Login, 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 login. Or when the show goes down and people start spamming F in the chat so that when I try to type... An no update, one see it. no one sees it. Yeah. 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 People are the problem. Yeah. Is that, is that patch out already? Sorry. Uh, yeah. The 15 minute AFK patch is out and they also pretty much doubled server capacity yesterday. They've been cool. working nonstop. It's amazing. I think it's like a team of four people. Uh, the back end team is four people. Yeah, that's right. The game is currently PC, PS5 only, but a popular petition is currently circulating to port the game to Xbox, which I'm sure they will do at some point when they are not busy. Well, I think it's like a PlayStation published game, so maybe not. Oh, discussion question. Does a company have a certain level of responsibility to encourage their customers to make good financial decisions? Um, technically, that's the most optimistic sounding thing I've ever read. Yeah. It's technically, no, not even slightly. Appreciate you. Uh, probably Jessica who wrote that. I think Riley's more jaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really cool when they do, but, yeah. uh, but I think expecting it at this point is simply not realistic. Yeah. It saddens me to say that, but it's the truth. But, yeah. That was like, um, the the pal world lead developer or something ceo i don't know what it was um but people pointed out like oh there's like a lot less players playing pal world now and he's like that's cool there was content and they probably like played it and then hopefully we'll release more content and they'll come back that's fine it's like sweet yeah, yeah. that makes sense hey you know who else did the right thing recently the xbox team yeah Xbox is adding the ability to recalibrate their own thumbsticks on Series X and S and Xbox One controllers. This will allow players to fix their own calibration issues without having to get a repair or contact support. It will also allow players to independently set up replacement thumbsticks. Very cool. In other news, earlier this week, Xbox announced that four previously Microsoft exclusive games, Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, Grounded, and Pentiment, would all be coming to PS5, and the latter two would be coming to Switch. Is platform exclusivity just like dead? I think to a certain degree. Is it buried? Maybe. Like, okay, we have a video coming that's a um, console tier list video. So we go through and we rank from, from S to F um, all of the major consoles from all the major players. And we don't get into handheld. It's just like your, li your living room consoles. So we just like crushes? Um, I believe we ended up being A tier. It's got... So, because... Pause. Wait. Because one of our criteria was how, how, how well the game library holds up today. <laughs> we factored in some historical significance so like the atari 2600 ends up with like a b or something just because of, of how many groundbreaking things happened on that console okay um but but one of our major considerations was how do the games for that platform hold up and this was something that David and I talked about. He's the writer for it. And you know how passionate he is about games. Yeah. And he's super into the hardware side as well. But he's a very, very passionate this gamer. This seems like a video that, that he would crush. Oh, yeah. yeah he, he killed it. He did yeah. a great job. Yeah. Um, but anyway, one of the things that started to happen as we made our way into... 
PS5, Xbox Series, is it became really difficult to evaluate really a console that blurry. way. Blurry, yeah. Because what is an Xbox Series game? We discuss how one of the struggles for the Xbox Series is that unlike the 360, they haven't really had a box mover title. Not really, not to the degree that Sony has, um, whether you're talking about Spider-Man or, um, okay, Final Fantasy VII Remastered, or, you know, whatever the case may be. What do you mean? Halo. Okay, so A, no, <laughs> and B, it's not exclusive. You can't shift boxes with software that runs on other boxes. Yeah. And, and Microsoft has really struggled. Uh, not only is the Xbox Series underselling the PS5 by like one to two or something like that, according to the most recent numbers we were able to find. I'm surprised it's honestly like that but low. Most of them are Series S. They're the basic one. Uh, They're not even selling their premium console. Not really. It's it's a, it's a non-factor in the current generation race. And so you know we're looking at this thing and I'm like, okay, so. Microsoft clearly, clearly saw the path here as to, to be a, ser a gaming services company. Uh, so how do we even evaluate their performance in a race they're not even really running? Yeah, that's interesting. And even the PlayStation 5, one of the challenges that we had evaluating its library was that <laughs> over the first couple of years, because the PS4 had such an enormous install base and reasonably powerful still, over the first couple of years... We saw so many games with simultaneous releases on both of those platforms that it really was more akin to a PC release that runs okay on your older PC or runs great on your newer PC. So how do you evaluate the game library of the PS5? Here we are, what, three, three years in, I think? Three years since launch, yeah. when most of the games aren't PS5 games. They're PlayStation games. Yeah, I, I think, but, too, but, like... It's, it's, I think the main blurring that's going to happen, like even with this announcement, uh, some of them are going to PS5, but not, oh wait, no, they all are going to PS5. See that, that's a little bit weird to me. Uh, more games coming to PC is not that weird to me. And I suspect PlayStation games personally, I don't think we're going to see a ton of them coming to Xbox. Just bad blood or I what? I think, well, no, I think the reason why Xbox is doing this is so that they look less like a monopoly. Mm. Uh, because they're getting a lot of issues lately with companies right, going true. after them. And one of the discussions around that has been um, that you're using this to try to crush PlayStation. So they're going, look, we're giving our games over to PlayStation. Yeah, it's for fine. now. Our, our old games that yeah. people don't care about The anymore. issue is, is that the way that monopolies squeeze out the competition is not by doing it immediately. Um, we, I was having an interesting conversation with someone about Uber's trajectory or like Uber's path to uh to profitability they're profitable now for apparently the first time and uh, i had to take an uber somewhere and it was like 30 dollars, and it was barely anywhere so it was as expensive or more expensive than what i would have paid for a cab way back in the day and like uber eats makes no sense anymore at the rates that you pay for it it's like gee should i pay double the price for a cold meal the already ridiculous price yeah. Like you don't eat out much. No. But have you gone at all lately? It's been a while. Okay. Um By the way, Dan, why didn't you join us for dinner after the shoot? Oh, I didn't um I didn't even think to. Did anybody text you? Um I think probably when I was already home. Okay. Well, okay. Well, first I invited you and then I guess you didn't hear me. And then, uh, I didn't realize that you were going to be breaking immediately. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that you were probably going to wait an hour or two. Okay, well, we, we did a crew dinner uh, on the, uh, the, the the giant display thing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, we'll do a crew dinner, which means... So you uh, didn't that, invite me to the giant display that, thing. Uh, or dinner. And I'm not crew or anymore. Uh, no, you Dan's are. Dan's not crew anymore. No, I explicitly invited you to join the crew dinner, which which is uh, when we... Let's like see what it is. When we do an off-site shoot, yeah. we'll often cover the meal just because people are usually inconvenienced in some way, whether no, no, it's... Dan, Dan and I understand. I had technically it's... already taken the I am talking break. to just, the viewers We're just right not now. included. Not to you. <laughs> this is what I'm it's like to work here. Looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The point is... <laughs> Sorry, Luke. Sorry. <laughs> the point is, Luke, did, did, you, did you read this at all? 
the receipt? No. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So, where would you rank? Um, where would you rank Mexican on like Ooh, uh, like good. like? No, 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 no. I, yes, it's delicious. Oh, pricing. Point. Yeah, just pricing. hold on a second. Yeah, is this is oh, this uh, is this a, a uh, like a, a generally premiumly priced cuisine or more of like an affordable everyday I think it's cuisine? It's usually more affordable. Okay. Um, Love it though. And, uh, you know, generally speaking, your hole in the wall versus your, like, you know, chain or, you know, yeah. upscale, generally here, generally more here. Generally more here. Okay. So we went to a Mexican hole in the wall. Yeah. And delicious, Often by the way. Bet. Delicious, yeah. by the yeah. way. Yeah. Um, we got two a tacos. Nice. Uh, a taco platter. Nice. Uh, they did add a guacamole. Ooh, that's okay. expensive, but nice. Yeah. Um, a gringo SP Lun, whatever that is. A couple burritos, a Dorito, another burrito, and an enchiladas plate. So we fed, um, how, how many were we, Dan? We were seven, I guess, without you. Something like that. Okay. I feel like you just got taxed for being a white dude. We with got the, with we the got, gringo thing. We got five Mexican <laughs> gringa. Gringa? I don't know what that means. Look, do I speak, do I speak Spanish? Okay. Um, gringo is, is, Google says gringo is a person, especially an American who is not Hispanic or Latino. Nice. Okay. Just a second. So five, five Mexican Cokes. Okay. Wow. We fed seven people like hole in the wall Mexican food. How much do you think the bill was? Seven people. This is this after tax or before tax? Let's go, uh, let's go after tax and tip. After tax and tip. Yeah. Oh, I'm so Because remember tipping's like out of control. Seven people. 160 bucks dude you're not even close it's way higher whoa and oh, yeah i was close to the subtotal apparently. yeah you're close to the can subtotal. I, can i see can i see you were under the pre-tax pre-tip total yeah this is more expensive per plate than i expected yeah for sure yeah yeah and like i was expecting like after tax per plate it was gonna be like 20 bucks and it's before tax per plate 20 yep. bucks and that's no tip yep and like you know, it's one of those things where on principle, yeah. the way that it is right now is not how I think things should work. People should be paid a reasonable amount of money yeah. and then the price on the menu should be what the food costs. And if there's exceptional service, then you can leave a small tip. That's how it's like supposed to work. Yeah. And that should be like rare. But here's the thing. That's not how it works. Not at all. And as someone who can afford the, you know, minimum eight, you know, it'll be like 18% 2025 on the three options or whatever. As someone who can afford to tip like that, and as someone who knows that that optimistic way that I wish it worked is not reality and that people actually do just depend on these tips for survival, um, I do tip. I'll just, I'll just, I'll press the stupid button or whatever. But like, th that's wild. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I, I massively prefer, uh, so I'll even take it a little bit further. I wish tipping wasn't a thing at all. I wish it was just priced in. And yeah, maybe if it's over and above, you just don't round or whatever and give them the remaining. Um, but I also wish... Um, like in, in stores and stuff, tax was included in the listed price. Like that, the, the that's fact, how they do it in Europe. The fact that there are countries that have figured both of these things out and we're over here just like, well, I don't know. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> like what? No. Ugh. Anyway, sure. I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I hate it, but it's one of those things where, you know, you could say, okay, well, Linus, having Luke guess after tip is not reasonable because that wasn't actually the price. But what I was trying to say was it effectively is here no, because yeah, I know yeah. that that kitchen staff and that server are not being paid enough. If they didn't receive any tips at all, they're going to be like homeless. They will not be able to live. Yeah. So, so it's not really optional, is it? It's, at that it's point, very then? expensive to live yeah. in BC and... If you, yeah, I don't know. Aaron Yerkerneva asks, what about on takeout orders? Um, if it's a place that I go regularly, um, I will tip well. And if it's a place that I don't go regularly, then I'll do like 10%. Because yeah. the reality so of it too. is that someone packed it. 
Uh, and, 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 and I also don't know often, where the tip is going. It often gets shared around. But um, what I do Not know always. is that even though theoretically there's um, you know lower overhead for takeout orders, in some ways it can be a lot higher now, especially with all the expensive, um, like more expensive, oh, like paper bags cost way more than plastic bags. And, and they're not allowed to use plastic bags anymore and stuff like that. If you get a drink, they're going to try to like tape over the thing so and e- they're, they're taping closed the bags often or stapling it closed. Or so even the, even the restaurant owners themselves, even if they're just pocketing it, there's a lot of overhead involved in, in handling takeout orders. Uh, so I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll leave a small tip anyway, because I, I can't think of any chains that I eat at. Um, that I do takeout from. So, I, yeah, yeah. I, them I don't know if I would bother. But even then, like a lot of them are franchises and it's it's relatively small business owners that are running the restaurants, even if it's, you know, a multi-billion dollar multinational that you yeah. know, owns the branding or whatever else. Yeah. <laughs> MDA187 asks, if plastic bags are illegal in Canada, how do you get your milk? <laughs> okay, a couple things. Oh, that's uh, hilarious. Number- that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> number one. That's pretty good. <laughs> Not those ones, the like disposable plastic bags for groceries and, and takeout and stuff like that. Not, why, why aren't the milk bags yeah, banned? I, ironically, we can still buy plastic garbage bags. So I can't use my shopping bag to line my garbage can, but, but I can, can buy, buy a completely separate bag to put in there. Brilliant. Why is that allowed? Brilliant. It's, it's pointless. Um, and then also the whole milk bag thing was as big a surprise to me as it was to you. Yes. Uh, it wasn't until I did it's not a BC thing. Yeah, it wasn't until I did my uh, my 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 Quebec exchange that I first encountered bagged milk. Apparently, the, it's a the thing f- is this? in more of Canada than I've ever known. Um, yeah, and you can find it in BC. It's just very rare. But it is pretty much not a thing here. It's yeah. it's gallon jugs, just like our neighbors down south, or paper cartons. The, the because BC's kind of tucked behind the Rockies, we're we're honestly like much more Americanized than a lot of the rest of Canada, I think. Um, or we're much more West coast eyes. Yeah. I would, I would we're say like hyper similar to Washington and Seattle area. I would say that if, if, if I, if I had to, if I had to say like what our country would be, it would probably be yeah. like BC, Yukon, BC, Washington, Oregon. Yeah. Would be like, like wet, wet coast to Stan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, <laughs> And then everyone else can kind of do whatever it is that they're doing. Um, but yeah, th- those are the further like, south and those further are the east of there. Like quite related. Like I, I, I remember, like every time I run into Oregoners or Washingtoners, I don't even know what you guys call yourselves. It's like, oh, these are my people. It's just, it's just obvious. Yeah. Like the accent is the same, yep. even though technically we're like, we're Canadian and they're American or something. Like the accent's the same. Yeah. The 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 alignment on a lot of stuff is the same. It's it's just it's kind of funny. Um, apparently some parts of the States also have bagged milk. Oh yeah. Oregonian. Is that, is that it? Sorry. I'm probably saying this wrong, but yeah, Pacific Northwest. Let's go. Um, researchers have lost a window into China, which is an interesting perspective on this that I would not have considered academics especially researchers focused on china have criticized google's decision to quietly remove cached pages from its search results the feature allowed users to view prior versions of web pages which made it invaluable in tracking information on the chinese internet which is of course heavily censored with important information often being retroactively scrubbed by the government According to Danny Sullivan, Google's search liaison, the feature was originally intended to help people access pages back when the internet was far less reliable that were just down and not working, uh, which is why it has now been discontinued because it's no longer really needed. And our discussion question here is, should we preserve features even when their intended purpose is no longer relevant? Um, For Google's part, I don't see why they would have any interest in this new purpose for that feature so i can understand why they're discontinuing it like they're essentially like a much much shorter term version of the way back machine right um and i can see why we don't want them to do that but i can also see how we have no real way of arguing that they should keep the feature because it doesn't benefit their business model in any meaningful way yeah it's unfortunate now. when we lose things like that, but like, 
It's a business. It's not a government. Luke, it's I a, have something to show you. Remember we talked about... I've seen this. Oh. Got him. Well, that sucks. <laughs> anyway, this is really funny. I was going to try and convince Luke, however briefly, that this was the old Will Smith video and then the new one was Sora um, because he had asked about what if Will Smith spaghetti... I, so I did actually call it right away. Um, for someone trying to rehabilitate their public image, uh, this was a good play. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I enjoyed. He slapped Chris Rock, right? Yeah. I think they're like doing a movie together or something. Really? Yeah, I think so. Oh, man. Did we just get 4D chest? <laughs> Maybe. Breast through time. 4D chest. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm going to injure the poor man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <coughs> oh, boy. Uh, anywho, um... <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. I'm not finding anything on this. So maybe I just made it up or maybe it was a very old video from before the slap. But Art. yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting because y you know what I was, I was talking about when we announced Sora, sorry. Uh, when we, not when we announced Sora, when we talked about Sora on the show last week, I talked about how it was weird, how certain parts of the frame would feel like they were in rewind and other parts were going forward. And like, it, it didn't really have a good sense of time and how things would actually Mm -hmm. like progress forward um one of the editing tricks that they used in the will smith video uh because it's not ai generated but there are editing tricks is they used like rewind and forward mixing and stuff like that to make it look really weird um i think if the ai video stuff fixes that it'll be immediately significantly more believable yeah We've got a bit of an update for you guys. We've had some members of our community getting notifications from various monitoring services informing them that they've been affected mm. by a data leak from the LTT forum. Oh, no. uh, this appears to be a bunch of very old leaked data, which has been re-released onto the internet due to a massive leak from leaklookup.com, a data breach indexer, which was uncovered last month. Uh, there does not appear to be any new breach of the LTT forum, and... If there was, you would be informed as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. So just hopefully that um, helps put your mind at ease. Speaking of your mind being as at ease. As soon as reasonably possible. Yes. Well, humanly. Yeah. We might take a sec, though, to like verify impact. That's like human. That. Okay. That was good. Are vending machines spying on students? Yes. <laughs> the, can you <laughs> let me do my job? Nope. <laughs> The University of Waterloo in Canada has announced that it will be removing several M&M branded vending machines because the green M&M is too sexy and it's a distraction for the students. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, they'll be removing them following the revelation oh. that the machines have the ability to collect facial recognition data. Yeah. This was discovered when one Waterloo student posted a picture of a strange error message on one of the machines in venda.vending.facialrecognition.app.exe. One student publication, Math News, tracked down the manufacturer's sales brochures, which say that these smart vending machines can collect, this is amazing, estimated ages and genders of every client and send that data to various parties, including Mars, the owners of M&Ms. Invenda claims that their machines are wholly compliant with the EU's stringent general data protection regulation, though that would only be possible if the machine requested explicit permission every time it stored a user's data. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a big doubt on that one. Adaria Vending Services, who were responsible for the machines on campus, say that the technology acts as a motion sensor that detects faces and activates the purchasing interface, but does not collect user data. Insane idea here, but just use a motion sensor? Are you a f***ing idiot? Crazy idea, I know. I am a little out of it right now. Luke! I, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm trying, all right? I'm just, I, <laughs> I'm just going to bring Dan in as our yeah. co-host of the Wanchips. Honestly, it's just fair. Just get the f*** out of here. I'll, I'll go produce. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Slash S, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely um. wild. The machine's facial recognition technology uses an extremely small unobtrusive camera and many students reported being completely unaware of any I'm camera sure. when using the machines yeah. because why would you be looking 
looking for that. Is there a picture of these? Like, can we see it? Uh, let's have a look. Ma let's bring up math news. Oh, wow. This, looks is, like this is great. This reads hole. exactly like a university student paper. I love it. Um, anyway, yeah, this is actually amazing. What, is that, what does that blog quote say? If we do some actual terms, they'll finally restart our Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's exactly as irreverent as I would expect it to be. Uh, anywho, here's the picture. So let's play find the camera. I don't know. Uh, I think I saw it. Where? Yeah, I see it. Or I, oh, wait. It's not, it can't be that. I think so. Why would they embed it there? Why wouldn't they just embed it in the black Actually, thing? Actually, fairly certain. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal the screen capture thing. Yeah, sure. Um, so that's a zoomed in photo of it, which is why I was pretty sure that was it. Because I think this blue here is the blue of the M and M that you saw. This looks just like a yeah. like a broken hole. Like, yeah, this doesn't look like it was. It looks like it was hacked into it. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, kind of odd. That's bizarre, dude. Freaking dystopia. We should just start calling it the dystopia show because it's all we ever freaking talk about. Welcome to the Wayne Show. We talk about spooky. Um, all right. Disco Elysium 2 is dead. I'm sorry. Sad. No. Yeah. <laughs> Let's buy a really good IP. and the then Worst news I've heard all year. Close it down. Embracer Group. Awesome. Cool. It's time for Wan Show After Dark. It's going to be a short one this week, by the way, guys. Uh, nice. Luke's not feeling well. I'm blaming Luke. How's the how's the underside of that bus treating you? <laughs> oh, you know. I mean, you kind of feel like you've been hit by it. So oh, yeah. I yeah. might as well put you there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's how that works. Um, John asks, is the PTM 7950 thermal phase change pad safe for a vertical mount? Um, this isn't going to leak from between my AIO and my CPU over time. And also asks, do you have a plush version for my CPU pillow that I bought last year? Keep up the decent work. Thanks, John. <laughs> I, uh, lo I love that. Yes, it is safe for a vertical mount, and we will keep up the decent work. In fact, we have some absolutely awesome videos coming. I, I wish I could... I wish I could just make the WAN show better by just playing them for you and watching them together. <laughs> uh, Kyle's AMD Ultimate Tech Upgrade oh, is... Oh, I'm excited about that. I saw the ECC upload, and I'm excited. Oh, you watched it? I haven't watched it. Oh. I just saw it go up on ECC, and I was like, ooh. It's like 30 minutes long yeah. and blew by. I had no idea the time had passed. That's wicked. It's so good. Good. Uh, the All China PC. Really good. Uh, Tanner did an outstanding job, because All rather China than PC. just buying weird Chinese stuff and reacting to it, he includes a whole bunch of context. Who the f*** are these companies? Yeah, yeah. Like, who are their parent companies? How long have they been around? How long do they say they've been around versus how long have they actually been around? Like, it's it's pretty neat. And in some ways, a little scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, It's, a, it's a, that's, that's a really good one that I just reviewed. Man, what else... It, I don't know. There's a ton of really good stuff coming over the next little bit. I'm very excited. Um, Dan, hit me. Hey, LLD, picking up the ABCs of gaming for my soon-to-be-born son. Do you see AI, AI and AR headsets being useful tool to help kids learn? I think we go through this every single time there's a new technological innovation. First, they, it was computers in the classroom. Are these a good tool for teaching kids? Like, well, yes, but also no. 3D printers. Then we went through it with, uh, you know, Cell tablets. Phones. Yeah. Then we went through it with cell phones. Laptops. Then we go through it with it, it, ev <laughs> everything. Yes, but also no is, is the answer. Um, everything in moderation, right? Well, not everything, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, don't don't moderate in moderation. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a good quote. You yeah. need to excessively moderate yourself. <laughs> now, now we're getting dystopian again. I don't know. I think I think the way to to fight off the dystopia is to be constantly at war. This is this is my whole new thing. I'm into that. I, I think I've talked about this before. 40K, that's how it happened. Kind Everybody of. was really I, moderate. I don't mean war is in <laughs> oh, like no. shooting people. I mean war is in like uh, understanding that so many things around you are 
obsessively intentionally manipulative <laughs> float plane chats just starting to list things that are not okay in moderation <laughs> only f your neighbor's wife in moderation no not anything in moderation <laughs> I mean, hey, maybe, maybe maybe there's an agreement there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't abuse that relationship. Seems very healthy. Oh, man. It's always good to be positive about that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe that's all copacetic. Only with cannibalism in moderation. Uh, yeah, don't take more than your fair share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, um, um, well, I think chat's very reasonable. Cool. Yeah. What's next? Uh, jeez, I don't know. Uh, currently watching live surrounded by a 40-foot video wall at Times Square. Nice. Linus, what's your Perfect. limit on display sizes? If TCL makes a 200-inch TV, will you get one? I won't have a big enough room for one. The limit on display sizes is dictated by your space. I think um, the, the smallest Samsung wall last time around, when I was, like, when I was looking into it, and I was like, oh, I kind of want one. Yeah. I think it was 143 inches. And the issue for me was that at 16 by 9, that was kind of too big for my space. At uh, a wider aspect ratio, 143 inches would probably be fine. Because as it turns out, and we learned this when we set up the, the big display, um, as it turns out, the wider you go, the shockingly little difference there is between the one uh, part of that right angle triangle or the, the bottom of the right angle triangle and the diagonal. Yeah. Like our, uh, the difference between our diagonal and our bottom was only like three feet or something like that at that width. Um, so I could probably handle like 140, 150 inch display if it was a wider aspect ratio. But if I had to go 16 by nine, 120 to 130 is probably about as big as I can go in that theater room, which seats comfortably about seven to nine people. Um, so if you were to have, if you had a larger room, like I sat in this amazing theater room virtually in the, uh, in the big screen beyond app, mm. that was like, it was like set up like you were a mega baller and you had like a theater room to hold your like orgies in or something like it was nice. enormous With and had all this neighbor's wife. like soft tiered seating everywhere and everything. It's very relatable. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. anyway, sitting in Don't there, I was that? like, I would need a 150 to 200 inch display at the front of this for it to, for it to be big enough that everyone could enjoy it. And an open relationship. Um, that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's very progressive. That's all Luke spends. Is this show over yet? <laughs> Luke, like, can we be done? Luke doesn't spend money on anything but that. That's why. You, that's why you can't buy anything. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Anyway, yeah, I, I I think that for for most reasonable sized rooms, we're there. And talking to display manufacturers, they seem to be kind of acknowledging that. Like uh, High Sense seems to really envision itself as competing more in the premium space rather than competing in the big but cheap space because that's not going to be a space that really exists anymore in yeah. a little while everyone's just going to have a big affordable tv yeah so you better get real good real fast now, the good news is man though that that's good for us that 100 inch or 110 yeah the 110 inch that they had at ces looked amazing Uh, let's see what we else we got. Hi, LLD. I work at a laser tag facility, and a few of us were given the opportunity to remodel our boss's office. What would you put in Taryn's office? And is there an item that you would recommend I get? I mean, if I was remodeling your boss's office, I would definitely get some kind of, like, shark and suspend it from the ceiling with a frickin' laser beam on its head. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. <laughs> that, that's actually perfect. I love that idea. Just like, like aquarium style, you know? With just the, like the fishing line, and you've just got this shark, and it just has a frickin' laser beam on its head. That's what I, wa that's what I would want in that office. Everything else, I don't even care. But, but like aquatic-themed paint walls you know get some sponge on there gets a little bit of green in there get some seaweed decals and then get like a freaking laser beam shark and then everything's t everything's 
Oh my goodness. Everything else is gravy. Could do a mural on the wall with that, then it would be harder to remove. As for what we would put in Taryn's office, we actually have a video coming on that. We took some suggestions from uh, the community, and we will be building him a PC worthy of a CEO. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, hey, LTT, love the show. It's the first time catching it live, and I thought I'd support it. Oh my God, you spent $400. <laughs> you bought one of everything. You don't have to do that. You could, you could watch it again in a bit, and... He bought two of one thing. Two... Bananas. 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 Uh, with the, oh, the Gerald Undone collab t-shirt. It's a really cool shirt, actually. A notebook um the tablet one that one's a cool one you open it up and the pages have like it's like writing on a little tablet it's a little thing uh but a banana for scale in yellow a mystery 40 ounce water bottle a backpack and a screwdriver retro with a silver shaft very nice okay anyway uh thanks eric um what do you got linus are you tempted to daily drive the s24 ultra and luke have you played any sod i have not much but it's been pretty good what is it what is sod? season of discovery i was gonna say soldier of destiny we were way off uh, it's not bad though. Yeah, thanks. Very believable. Yeah. I mean, it's I, it's basically just Soldier of Fortune, but with a D. Oh. Yeah. Destiny. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, um, yeah, I'm pretty tempted by the S24 Ultra. I I'm I've been not missing the fold as much as I thought I would. Uh, speaking of which, Dan, I finally wiped everything off of it, and it's in my office. You can just oh no, I haven't. I, well, I copied everything off it. I haven't wiped it. But if you just remind me, I know you said you wanted to try it. So um, sure, it's yours. You fixed it. Um, oh, yeah, that was my deal. I told him he couldn't do it, and then Dan was like, "You can't tell me what to do." And I was like, "That sounds like a Dan thing." Fine, to say. if you can fix it, you can have it. I was, I oh. was actually like, "I just want to make sure that you can have your phone that you love back, Linus." Mm. I don't mind. That's very kind of you, though. No, it was, it was a lot more obsessive compulsive than that. Oh, I had to. I was going to do it whether you wanted to. I, I know, or not. I know. Every once in a while, he'll, he'll like we. I have this chat called the the Dan tasking chat that aj and i are in yeah because he gets asked to do like everything on the planet so yeah. we try to you know make sure that we're still aiming true um but every once in a while there'll there'll be some like electronic repair thing that'll come through and i'll be like hmm, does this make a ton of sense almost always it's no eh. will it make dan super happy that doesn't matter for productivity of the I'm about, business. Yeah. I'm about to make Dan super, super happy. Oh. <sighs> Has anyone talked about the video that you and I are going to work together on? No. Oh, God. No, no. You, Luke, have you approved to this? I don't... He doesn't have to. Yeah, I, if it comes I know. from him. I know. I'm Line, allowed Linus to gets un, unlimited. Without going through the proper channels. It is my rule. But you're going to get out of this. free. <laughs> I'm scared now. So, um, did you ever see that CRT projector that Ploof got for that video on a CRT projector? I don't think I did, but I recommended Chase get some for Smash. <clears throat> I grew up with a, a CRT projector with the three tubes, and we ended up selling it to some Super Smash Brothers players because you get the CRT latency, but 12 feet across. All right. So let's hmm. talk about CRT projectors for a minute. Actually, no. Let's not talk about CRT projectors. Let's talk about the right to repair. Okay. We got actually a second one of those CRT projectors. Um, it had been stored outside and uh, is in pretty challenging uh, operational condition. It still works a little bit. But what's cool is unlike the first one we bought, which was more expensive and <coughs> definitely worked, the second one we got came with a service manual. Oh. And that service manual is about two inches nice. thick and has literally f***ing everything beautiful every schematic for absolutely everything and i was kind of thinking you know what would be a really cool video is if we told the story of how we lost right to repair because right to repair isn't something we're asking for it's something that we deserve to have back we had it that was normal that was, was a thing expected yes and so and so I thought as a, as a vehicle for that story, we could use this, this old Sony CRT projector that quite frankly, Dan, I don't think is worth fixing even for tournaments at the land because it's too dim. Uh, yeah. Uh, you'd have to get a better one. You have to get like a dark room. Yeah. But, but. Be kind of sick though. Mm -hmm. But we should fix it because we can and we should be able to. 
is sort of the point that we're getting that at with this. Me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I thought it'd be kind of cool to get some other prominent right to repair advocates and and sort of um, and and so yeah, so get so so Dan, your job would be to fix the projector with this incredible service manual. And it, it don't worry, it's not dead as a doornail. Mm. It's a bit dead. I would love to talk through my troubleshooting intuition as well. Sure. Which kind of uh, is what allows me to fix these things. And there's also a bloke that we are in touch with who did a video fixing one of these a little while ago. And um, it w- I think it might be kind of a cool opportunity for a collab there. Yeah. So there's a lot of synergies, you know, to use a Synergistic crappy, horrible solutions. Yeah, bu- business term. But I thought, I thought you'd be pretty into it. <clears throat> yeah, um, that does sound fun. Yeah. So uh, it's super fun. So consider that something that we're, we're going to do sometime sometime eventually we're not in a hurry because it's not like the thing is going to get any older uh, (laughs) or deader but yeah when we when i saw that service manual man there's there's like schematics for everything absolutely everything like you could basically take the entire thing apart down to board level components and rebuild it because the cost was because all that stuff was expensive not because you it's proprietary and you can't build one yourself because we won't show you how you can't put it back together yourself because we won't show you how because f- you like just a totally, totally different industry philosophy. That's kind of what I grew up with as well. That's what my dad did is he repaired CRT TVs um, and VCRs and things like that. And he would do those board level repairs. Um, he still does that now for like, you know, word of mouth type repair stuff. But in the early days, they were simpler and you could ask the company for schematics. Um, there's even some high-end audio gear because he does studio audio gear repair because a lot of it's still vintage analog, extremely boutique niche stuff. And some companies you'll you'll message and be like, "Hey, your thing's broken. I'm a service tech here. Got any info for me?" And they'll send you all the service manuals and spare parts and That's schematics. Great. And then I know one company. It's Universal Audio. Uh, just won't won't even talk to you. Oh, we got to send it back. It's, it's like a a fifteen thousand dollar piece of vintage audio equipment, and they're just like, "We we'll give it back." It's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna send it to you. The air shipping is too dangerous. Yeah, it's not reasonable. It also weighs a hundred pounds. So, anyway, yes, um, I am tempted by the S twenty four Ultra and also all that other stuff we just talked about. Uh, I guess this is the last one. Nope, I'm on the wrong page. Uh, really happy to <laughs> see you guys are selling PTM 7950. So much easier to get this way. My question is, did you have plans to buy and sell this since the video on it? Or is this a much more recent idea? You'd be amazed how long things take to like do properly. Like we had to figure, figuring out how to get them cut. Who is going to cut it? Honeywell? No. <laughs> because if they did, we're not really buying them in bulk anymore, are we? Um, so I think the, 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 how do the, they, how do they come? I think the full size sheets are like four of these. Okay. And then but they're then flat packed. Those would have been like, whatever, it's like $200 or something. And, and so, no, no, oh, it's like very OEM. It's just like bulk. So we had to figure out, okay, well, how do we do this? Oh, in no, a s- I was just wondering, is it a roll no. or is it a stack? It's, it's a stack of sure. flat packed yeah, okay. things. Yeah. Uh, so we had to figure out like how, how to cut them. We had to create installation guides. We had to create packaging and we had to, we had to source it. Sourcing it took a long time because Honeywell just straight up didn't return our emails. Uh, like, sorry, who the f*** are you? Like, they don't care. Um, so it was, it was after the community... Uh, brought up the idea that because this stuff was kind of hard to get your hands on as an end user at a reasonable price that we should source it and we should sell it so we did that took a long time but hey it's there now exciting hey ll and d seeing as you design and produce so many products what if any inter product consideration and testing do you do how things look fit work together etc a lot i mean the pants i'm wearing right now Oh, look at that. I have a screwdriver in it. I uh, have a pocket that is specifically designed to hold a tool and that we obviously validated with our screwdriver. This is an early prototype that the screwdriver actually doesn't fit very well into, but that's why we do these things yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, and, we those prototypes. and we made sure that with our screwdriver, it doesn't stab you when you sit down. It's like at a, so we had to make sure that the pocket was at a reasonable height so that it wouldn't just like jab you in the in the gut uh, regardless of how you put it in so it won't stab you if it's uh, blade side up with a bit installed either 
Um, so is same, it called Blade Side? I think so. Uh-huh. Is it not? I think so. I don't know. Uh, now I need to look it up. <laughs> Bit side? Shaft side? <laughs> the business end side. Yeah, at least someone calls it a blade. Yeah, sure. Blade. Yeah, I don't know. I just never heard that, so I wasn't sure. What is a blade screwdriver? Oh, for crying out loud. Tool used to drive a slotted screw head is called a standard common blade, flat blade, slot head, straight. Oh, head. that's just for slot heads, though. I don't know. This isn't a slot. It's Phillips. Screwdriver blade. Yeah. All, yeah right. all right. I don't know. There might be other. There might be other words for it, but. No, I didn't know any other word. I was just yeah. surprised it was called blade when it's not a. Yeah. Anyways. And last one I've got. Uh, hi, WAN.DLL. What's the status of the expensive fidget toy made from screwdriver ratchet and precision screwdriver ball bearings? I'd like to give you my money for that, please. Ugh, purgatory. There's only so many projects we can work on at a time, and it hasn't been a priority. I'm sorry. You'll have to spend your $25 gift card on something else. <laughs> Ugh, awkward. <laughs> Anywho, I think that's it for the show today. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, sorry, it's a little shorter than usual. I blame Luke. I'll take that. Yep. Yep. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Actually, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. You gotta let those go. No, I blame myself. What? For being too considerate of Luke. <laughs> okay, you can roll the outro now. Oh man. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. <laughs> I'm not that considerate. I mean, we're still playing Super Checks, so, you know. Oh god. Oh. One and done. Winner Stop. takes all. Unless you want best of 3.